verification that one person stuck and we know one person the plan was uh, uh, was going to be late so continued public hearing Saddle Hill Road lots one to four and I'll do an A because we added the fifth and thank you for showing that uh, do we need to open the public hearing yes we have to open the public hearing make a motion to reopen the public hearing second all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstain open um, want to give us an update of, uh, for those who weren't here last time, the question <coughs> arose is access to the driveways for emergency vehicles and wanting to make sure that, um, wanted to see the studies that were done to permit, especially the fire department, to have access to the driveways. Uh, so the applicant working with the fire department uh, went back and developed a plan showing uh, what would be necessary to provide that uh, access. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to refer to our engineer, Wayne um, from Waterman Associates. He had a discussion with the fire department. I think he'd be uh, the best to describe uh, what his de he designed in his discussions. Wayne? There's a joke in that, what did you do that for? <laughs> I, but I, I don't want well, to bring it up. It on television, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> so, again, just want to thank you folks for uh, starting your agenda early to accommodate uh, us. I know you typically start at 7.30, but uh, just said that uh, you could start at 7 o'clock, much appreciated. Uh, again, one of the requests from the board was to provide the fifth lot and show its relationship to the, uh, the other house lots. Uh, and uh, the, the driveway access <coughs> on each of the lots. One, one suggestion I think was for you, Mr. Jim, that you know perhaps if we approach these lots a little different at, a, at a, uh, an angle in this direction, which was acceptable uh, to the chief. Uh, looking at it from, from our perspective, there are a couple things that have come into play. One is, you know, did we want all the driveways coming in this direction, or could we mix it up and some come in a little bit more perpendicular? When I spoke with the chief, which we met uh, last Monday night, uh, last Monday during the day, uh, one of the things that we discussed was looking to work in harmony with what you folks are here to uphold, the Santa Road bylaw, and you know, trying to work with uh, his vehicle, uh, which is a, a pretty stout vehicle, and uh, you know, maintaining his, his, the, the stone wall as much as we can. So what we had done is we had run his vehicle into the, uh, the lots on all the, the lots coming from the uh, same direction. As you recall, he said at the last hearing that uh, he would be able to, as long as he had a way to get in, he could maneuver as, as necessary to get in and out. Um, so what we had done is we had taken the walls and we had returned them up along the right-hand side of the drive consistently on all the... Uh, Driveways to the left-hand side. There's a shorter section of section of wall that we have returned into the lot. One of the reasons that we had uh, returned it uh, into the lot a little deeper on the right-hand side was to serve as a uh, delimiter between the driveway area, the lawn area, the travel surface that he would need, and the the lawn and landscaped area to the right. So we looked at a couple things. Uh, what I wanted to do was rather than have an expanse sea of pavement, from my perspective, and I'm sure from the boards as well, it's not what you would like to see, however we'd like to accommodate his, his vehicle. So we came up with a solution where we had taken measurements on drive, some driveways down on Saddle Hill Road and Fruit Street and found that at the curb cut, right at the street, the driveway apron at the street varied from 18 to 26 feet. So we had looked at his driveways and we had come up with uh, widths that are somewhere around the 20 foot, 22, 23 foot range. So we're right, we're right there. Um, and that's coming in at the angle. So rather than do uh, pavement to, to one side or even pavers, what we're proposing, and he was accepting of it, was grass pavers. And the 
grass pavers are, I'm, I'm sure the board may have seen them, honeycomb type uh, pavers that you fill with loam, and they can take wheel loads up to 80,000 pounds per square inch. So they certainly can take his, his vehicle as it comes over this area. What we talked about was you know, maintaining that uh, as you enter the lot, and that right hand side where we, we would uh, wrap the stone wall into the property would define the limits. We came up with a, uh, an illustrative that we provided to you folks that shows the vehicle movements. And what you'll see, I'll just point out one, and uh, so right now you can see in red what that uh, delineates is the front wheel path on the vehicle. So on either side you can see the, the red wheel path. The blue dash line indicates the rear path, the travel path of, of the vehicle. And there's a faint green dotted line, and that's the overhang of the vehicle, if you recall. We had a discussion as to how much of the vehicle would aim for a hang, and we would have to keep that area clear. So in every instance- Excuse me one second. Just for reference, the board, everything we have is in black and white. So oh. just make sure you, it's part of the, our, bill, our desire to contain the costs in the town. So it was, okay. it's really <laughs> If you like, I can bring this up to the that, board so you can get it. Do you want to see it up a little bit closer? Yes. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Thank you. We're following on our black and white copies. No, I can appreciate that. So, as I said, so for instance, what's an easy one to look at? This guy here, you can see the red front wheel track. Okay. The rear wheel track. So, as you can see, it comes over here and continues along this edge and then continues along the vehicle and you can see where it meets the vehicle. The overhang on the, on the vehicle, or the front overhang, you can see it over to here a green dotted line, and on the back you can see where the, the, uh, the front end, when it makes its turn, comes in and swings over to this area here. So what we've done is we've kept the travel surface of the, of the wheels on the driveway pavement and over the grass pavers. What we're looking to do is, rather than uh, a 12 foot wide uh, gravel base, and, and typically what happens is they go a foot or two beyond that, rather than doing that, uh, we've, or in addition to doing that, we've expanded the compacted gravel base in this area as well. So he's going to have, you know, not typical of most driveways, um, he will have a compacted gravel base in this area here as well. The honeycombs will set on top of it, and then they'll backfill and, and blow and seed it. Um, and then, as I said, what, what we wanted to do is kind of maintain some character of the, the stone wall and the look in here, rather than have an expanse uh, paved surface in here, that's why we're proposing the, the, uh, the grass uh, pavers, and we've maintained the pavement width in this location of 12 feet. Out at the street, we have five foot radii on, on the roundings, so it opens it up to you know five and 12, five times two to 12, 22 feet or thereabouts. And it varies based on the angle. On the grass pavers with the honeycomb, once yep. you look, uh, see the loam that, does it essentially disappear? So yep. Does it look then just like regular just grass? Just like regular grass. All right, so yeah. as I drive by, I would not necessarily you would know that. It. You'd never see it. So one consideration that was, was kicked around the office was, well, what about cobbles? I said, well, it's just, you could do that, but it just doesn't look natural. And one of the things I just kind of wanted to do is kind of take this wall and return it so it has a, a more natural feel, like a more, you know, Turn of the century feel of last century, not the previous, not the mm -hmm. most previous. Yeah. And there's an, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. There's no, no okay. there's no possibility that the apparatus would come in from the other direction ever. He said, as the fire chief had indicated at the last hearing, um, he more than likely would be coming in from this direction. If he had to come in from the other direction, he would make his the, the necessary maneuver to, to take on the driveway square. Okay. I think they can also do a turnaround at Pel Can they go around the block at Pell and you have it going in the right direction? I think. I'm not sure. I know that so, friends of mine who are firefighters say they, when they need to get there, they'll get there. Yeah. Um, so I see that, that occurring here as well. So. Frank, any questions? We'll go. Yes. Uh, numerically, uh, one is the southernmost and five is the northernmost. Yeah. Okay. So we did model their, their vehicle uh, and put it in the simulation software. 
Uh, one question just on the um, side of the driveways that don't have the, the honeycomb. It looks like the stone going up into the driveway varies a little bit. Is there any consistency? A couple have four stones, a couple have maybe six or seven. It's on just lots a graphic right? illustration. So what we were looking to do was take whatever wall was removed yep. uh, from here and, and relocate it uh, along the edge of the driveway. You know, I like the I, I like the idea a lot. I was just curious in terms of, you know, what does he? I know on looks like here on the honeycomb side it goes all the way up to the end of the honeycomb essentially, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but on the other side where there's no honeycomb, what was the rationale? Or was there any kind of say rationale that said I took this one up five feet, this one up six feet or seven feet? Yeah, and it was just to provide some sort of symmetry. But again, one of the, the concerns here was to better define the. I get that one right, spot on. I think it would be helpful just to know if you're going to go three feet, four feet, five feet on the other side. Yep, and they could, you know, again. Yeah. You know. Before we move on, typically we have not encouraged or supported the use of aprons up the driveway for the stones, but to fill in gaps. But based on, and not making a recommendation one way or the other, based on this change where you want to define a width for the vehicle to go, I, I think it would be if the board desired to make an exception in this case, it might be rational to do so to define this area a little better as opposed to not having anything there and somebody start planting bushes five years from now. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about that. You know, um, it defines right. the area that should be left open for Correct. The, the vehicles. That's a good point. So you're just going to have grass on either side of that stone? Correct. Correct. You'll note as well that when we did take on the driveways to minimize the impact of the stone wall, we went on the opposite side of the street, which he said he typically does. Um, so looking at the lines of sight, uh, it was clear sight distance. Of course, when you get a fire truck out there, they, they are hard to miss. Uh, so we, were we took it on from the opposite side of the street to minimize Questions? Um, no, I'm, I'm good for it now. You had one. I did, yeah. I, I think in the original plan that you presented last time, it was four, drive, or four driveways and you're going to have to remove 150 feet of stone wall, and yes. now it's five driveways and 133 feet. So I have this tabulated from the original submittal yep. and where we are today. Okay. So from the original submittal, the original submittal for lot one was 40 feet. The last go round before the discussions with the fire department was 16 feet, and now it's at 27 feet. Okay. Lot two uh, originally was 50 feet. Uh, the last submittal was 22 feet. It is now at 31 feet. The lot four originally was 31 feet. Uh, it had dropped to 17 feet, now it's in the middle of 24 feet. Okay. And then, uh, I'm sorry, was that lot three? Or that was three. That was okay. three. I said three? You, you said, said four. four. You, said, said, four. you said four in the second aspect. Of it. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so lot four is, uh, was 31 feet at the original submittal, uh, had dropped to 19, and is now at 28. Okay. And lot five is included in the last number too, right? And lot five uh, was not in the original application, so no numbers were reflected for lot five, but that is currently at 23 feet. And these numbers are you giving are the break in the stone wall? Or? That's correct. Mm -hmm. To allow the vehicle to go so. David, any other questions? Go ahead. David, no, do you have no, that no, good. Just as a caveat. Um, just a reminder of what you had said right from the beginning was that um, five years from now when people are living there and something going on, we need to keep that into perspective. And before we open, uh, any other comments? That was pretty much it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I see the chief here. Are you happy with the uh, any comments on what was proposed, the four-foot openings that they came up with? I'm joking. That's it. Yes, I had a very okay. productive meeting. I, I got your joke. Uh, <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm late. Okay. I'll just start it right now. Uh -huh. 
Any other comments from people in the audience? No. I have a comment um, now. Uh, I'd like to uh, say that I'm glad that the chief and, and, and your team got together. It's uh, very respectful of safety and aesthetics and covers all the bases of what we're looking for. The, each lot is uh, as required by the scenic road law shows trees and stone work and um, I'm really happy to see a really well thought out plan. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other comments? I have one comment. Do we know the impact in terms of tree removal on the driveways? Uh, was there changing? No, I don't believe that you're, you're going to be looking at much of a change. We're coming in at the same location. In my understanding from the landscape architect on the project is we're looking at those areas with, with the smaller caliber trees. Uh, so we weren't looking, at, looking to take out any specimen trees. Okay. Well, somebody want to make a motion? As yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the um, proposal by the applicant to um, make the changes to the driveway entrances, uh, the changes to the stone walls, the uh, changes to the new driveway design um, as proposed. Uh, do you want to? Sorry. Um, Point of order, do you want to go through the format that Jennifer has? Is that, or is that kind of all encompassing? Uh, I just for proposal was good. No, the proposal was not. That's a good point, Frank. Uh, the proposal was strictly based on what the applicant was looking to do. If there's other things that we need to kind of walk through as part of the criteria, I defer to the chairman on that. Yeah, looking at the criteria that would apply is basically the scenic by road by law criteria and that's the basis for evaluation just so you know where we're coming from is the degree to which the proposed work would adversely affect the scenic and aesthetic values upon which the scenic road designation was originally based the necessity for the proposed work in terms of public safety welfare or convenience compensatory action proposed such as replacement of trees or walls availability of reasonable alternatives to the proposed work which could reduce or eliminate anticipated damage to trees or stone walls, whether proposed work would compromise or harm other environmental or historical uh, values and consistency of the proposed work, previously adopted town plans and policies. Now, we also had briefly discussed uh, the apron, but as proposed, the aprons, which historically we have not done, but I think as proposed and based on watching heads nod, the feeling was in this case, uh, it was uh, acceptable. Can I ask a question? Yep. <clears throat> um, we previously have not gone with the aprons. Is that some, just a, are we just talking about our precedent or are we talking about? Uh, it, it's a, a precedent and the idea was basically to fill in any missing so that could be an alternative is fill in any missing stones along the street at spots that are remaining mm -hmm. um, as i am recused, recused from this i just have a question with regards to the letter from um chief slamon in regards to the area that we're talking about with the um, pavers, or not the pavers, but the honeycomb, that it may be maintained in throughout the winter. Now, if they're growing seed, grass, and everything else, doesn't that get disturbed through um, maintenance and stuff like that? And how is the homeowner going to determine how to maintain that at all costs to accommodate um, the fire department? Well, we had, uh, that's, uh, that's a good question. We had talked about that with, with the chief. When you look at these honeycombs, you know, the way they, they work, when you drop a plow blade down, unlike pavement, which goes right to the pavement, 
I've got them at my house and I have crushed stone at my house as well. And basically when my plow guy comes through, he drops the blade. The, the, I'll tell you right now, the crushed stone doesn't fare as well, but the honeycombs are fine. The honeycombs hold up quite nicely. That it doesn't compromise any of the integrity of the, of the honeycomb. So he comes through, and when he comes through and it starts to melt, you start to see the grass, but that's basically how it's maintained. And with this, uh, the intent again with wrapping that wall around is again to define that edge. So when the plowing contractor comes in, the homeowners are going to know that he needs to maintain that when they when they uh, enter onto the property. Okay, so so to to add to the the question is that when when that's being done and the people that own the property are paying to put seed down and have the grass and the plows tear it up for for maintenance of that and this is this is i'm just thinking outside the box Th theoretically for the whole <laughs> you, you future know, yeah uh, so every year they're going to have to re reconstitute the the grass that is being disturbed by the upkeep of that property i'm concerned that the that the homeowner won't maintain that on a, on a regular basis. And what do we, as a board, outside of my pulling myself back, how do we do make sure that that doesn't happen in the future for us to, for it to come back and land on the board's lap? That's one of my questions. I might be able to answer that. Okay. Because basically the way it works, these honeycombs sit up, you know, several inches. And so when they plant in the honeycomb, when they go to the, the plant that initially, the, the saw doesn't come up to the very top. So when the grass comes up, it's almost like, and I don't want I, I only bring this up because we have a couple cats, but it's almost like that cat grass stuff, where that, that comes up between the honeycombs, that's basically what you're seeing. Yeah. And so they're, they're, you know, they're about this big, uh, and then the grass comes up between it, and then it stays pretty lush. You know, so your top, your, your soil doesn't come to the top of the honeycomb. But eventually, it would fill in with sand and, and road debris and everything else that would be there. And eventually, you will have a a restructuring that needs to be done. Potentially, yes. Okay. So the, my question is again, back to you, with regards to how does the homeowner define the maintenance of that going forward to accommodate Chief's needs for the fire truck. Mm -hmm as well as following our bylaw, bylaws of, of the town? That's a good question. I think it ultimately comes down to aesthetics, to, to the individual homeowner. You know, if you have a house, uh, and what are, what are these, I'm not sure exactly what these things are going for, probably a million a piece million, or something, yeah, roughly. you know? So I'm thinking that if you own a million dollar home and you see the Joneses have a beautiful front apron, the last thing I want to do is have a Beverly Hillbillies apron. You know, so I think it comes down to that 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 sense of pride of the property. You know, I know it does with me. So, I don't know if that. It, I think it. The, my gut feeling is that the homeowner is going to be all over that and maintain. To the chair, yeah. um, I think Cliff is bringing up a good point because I, no matter what, I mean, maintenance in any house is going to be a pain in the neck, and if every year it has to be replanted and and manicure to make it look nice. Mm -hmm. um, I understand where you're coming from in that this is a, seems like a decent alternative, but would you, guys, would you be amenable to some kind of uh, condition uh, or deed restriction in any property that you sell that you lay it out there that there is a honeycomb you know, barrier here, uh, you know, section of the driveway which is necessary for fire protection and uh, needs to be maintained. I don't know if we, I'm not sure if we can do that as a, a board of restriction. Right, I don't think we can, and I don't, I don't know if that's our, our question to we answer. We could do, we could do ask the developer to notify the purchasers. But it's subsequent purchasers. I mean, we'd want to right, but I don't think we have it. that, I'm not, without Jennifer here, I don't think we have the ability to um, put a condition on now on maintenance mm -hmm. happening in the in the future if there's no homeowners association or something like that. Sure. <coughs> if I may, through the chair on, on this topic, which is viewing it from a town-wide aspect, where it's a, a somewhat of a change or a new approach, 
uh, concerning the chief's uh, safety concerns and uh, the scenic road law um, aesthetics. I'm thinking this is really the first time we're looking at this uh, mix of safety science and, and uh, building needs and construction. And I think uh, it's worth a, a try. And I, I think that we can add a condition that uh, the stone walls that are being moved or replaced and the, what are we calling this, a skirt or uh, the honeycomb, um, where it's really there for a safety concern uh, just be maintained uh, as part of, of this scenic road law um, um, the idea behind a scenic road law uh, so at one point you're, you're saying well people will maintain it in, uh, and they will and should uh, but on the other side if we don't specifically say a condition in it and it doesn't get maintained or doesn't work as we think, uh, then any other f future changes down the line we would be out of our purview and anything would happen on, the, on that. If end. I can interrupt, our That's authority fine. on these only relates to the opening of the stone wall and the removal of trees. So the only conditions we can really put in or relate it to that, it's not a full site plan review approval sure. it's um, I, I think going in and trying to do something that's going to control maybe it's it's let's take an example if it was 20 feet are you going to do a kid and it was all pavement it's no different they might plow you know just the opening which well, I've seen that before John, through, through the chair I was just going to say the exact same thing that you said I think we should just stick to the stone walls there's not even any trees in question here so um, they've they've worked with us to try to get do the best to satisfy safety in the limit of the stone walls. So I think we should move forward with just what's on the table. Through the chair, though, I'm specifically commenting on item C: compensatory compensatory action proposed, such as replacement of trees or walls. And this is a compensatory action, uh, which is a, with an eye for safety as well. Um, and I'm just saying that if we add a, a condition that says uh, if this perhaps isn't the right answer in the future and they want to pave it all over, unless we put something in there that restricts it, they could do that. And then we're and then it's not really the positive effect of a scenic road bylaw. It's uh, it's whatever goes. And so I'd rather have uh, a condition in that covers uh, the future uh, of this idea that we're trying. Uh, as opposed to just leave it uncovered. Through you, Mr. Chair. I think we've discussed it enough, and if people yeah. feel that they want to do that, they should make a motion and we should vote on it. Well, that, that brings well, me up to the motion on yeah. table. Well, we have we a have motion, motion on table, do we have a second on the motion on table? I, well, I have a friendly amendment for that motion to put Well, let's get the second okay. so it's on the table. Uh, I would second it. Okay. I have a friendly amendment to put it into the context as, as Jennifer presented it. Um, I'd like to have the wording of the motion be that the uh, the five properties as presented to us uh, are acceptable uh, changes under the scenic road bylaw, and uh, that we um, that we accept uh, that we accept these these five properties as, as as being within the bounds of what our expectations are. May I, um, to the chair, please? Nope. I'm I guess I don't understand the amendment. Uh, okay, let me try again. My friendly amendment is that uh, the wording of the motion is that uh, the cri the project of the five properties meet the criteria of the scenic road bylaw. So through the chair. And that's basically what it's the motion the, yeah, would be. Because if not, we would not be able to right. make the motion. So through the chair, may I please? Well, um, I, is it, a, it, it? It's a direct question that could, could might clear put light on or something. Is is it is it possible that why aren't we looking at it as widening the driveway in pavement as opposed to just doing um, doing this this 
yeah. unconventional way. Why aren't we Why aren't we looking at widening the driveway opening? Well, I think uh, I think it comes down to aesthetics. Yeah. Um, I think if we look at it and we're, we're uh, look at a driveway opening that is uh, the pavers plus the the uh, so right now the, the pavement in for instance at lot one is 23 feet wide where it meets the other pavement. The pavement plus the, the grass pav pavers is 30 feet. That's a 30 foot wide. That's something that would be more suited to a commercial type apron. So you could, you, could, you know. If, if I, I, I could, I want to show you one. could I just comment on yes. that? Mm -hmm. uh, Cliff, I think that they, they are. They did exactly what we asked them to do, which was we had a concern with this large pavement opening. opening. So we're still getting a large opening that will accommodate the apparatus, but it's going to be a lot more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so I think this is exactly both what we asked them worlds. to do. It's yeah. the best of both worlds. So we are getting a wider opening. It's just not going to look that way. Okay. The only thing that I, I, I I'm going to close okay, the discussion at this point. Uh, so there's a motion on the table. Take a vote on the motion. Aye. All in favor. Aye. 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 Are we? Wasn't there an amendment? But it was the amendment was basically friendly one. Was no, was the really amendment reasonable. basically his motion had to meet the criteria. Okay. So okay. I'm good with that. Okay. So yeah. all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. So carried. Abstain. I have to. The cues is different than the cues. Yeah. Still carried. Yeah, approval. Thank you. <coughs> good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. And thank you for waiting, and I, you're in perfect timing. Apologize no problem. Thank you all. We let everyone. Oh, clip. Can we close the hearing? Motion to close the public hearing on the second. Second. Hill. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carry. <laughs> We now have to open the hearing, uh, continued public hearing for 5060 West Main Street site plan review. We have a motion. I make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. So I think we're at an update point. Uh, ask the applicant to kind of update us on what has happened and how far we've gotten. David, since we left you last, we have um, undergone, undertaken some soil testing, verified some uh, conditions at the site, and generated a revision to the uh, stormwater plan. We are now taking our water uh, via a separate um, conveyance to the large basin at the uh, northeast corner. Um, I did not speak with, with Philip Bader, but an associate did, uh, working out some of the parameters regarding uh, the modeling of uh, the system and um, basin construction and the updating of the, of the four bay in the middle. We feel now that we can uh, complete the uh, design of the stormwater mitigation and some of the outstanding issues in the, the beta letter from, uh, I believe, uh, September 19th are related to um, the completion of that design so that we can get uh, all the other issues, the ancillary issues associated with that, uh, the uh, operation and maintenance plans, a standalone document, uh, some of the uh, Signatures tying uh, the proponents to the, uh, the long-term maintenance. We can all wrap up now that we've got uh, uh, a head start on that drainage design. So unfortunately, we don't have the final version for you uh, tonight, but uh, hope to get with, uh, with Beta the next couple of days and wrap all that up. In the okay. meantime, um, Michael Radner, Radner Design Associates, was uh, tasked with developing a the landscaping plans that have been uh, mentioned a couple times in the review letter. Mike had a conflict tonight and is not able to make it. 
but um, I did include, uh, I brought along this plan, I did include this in a package uh, middle of last week to, uh, to Jennifer. I believe uh, the board has that. Uh, what, um, what you see here is a change to that center. Uh, West Main Street is down here. This is the existing phase two, and this is our phase three addition. And the access area down through the middle, which the, um, the previous fire chief wanted for uh, access to portions of this building. Now in discussions uh, with the current chief, we've been able to uh, eliminate some of the concerns regarding the access down through here. So that area that was generally hardscapes associated with the access to the building are now gonna be softened a bit. Uh, the stairs stay, but the walkway is new to the patio associated with the new building and then lawn areas are introduced in this yellowish color and then landscaping beds in the green and then some trees have been added to soften that view around the other side of the building. You may recall that uh, we generated the landscape um, design plans in 2012 that were going to focus on the perimeter, perimeter of the site. How can we uh, create a, a view shed on West Main Street? How can we screen this from some of the abutting property owners? That stuff all went in during construction of 2012-2013. So what we're now focused on is how do we complete the design for phase three. And, and Joe, uh, was the chief uh, okay with the changes or the updates that you, you had made on to addressing some of his concerns? <coughs> I am. Some of the dialogue we had, I'm kind of learning the process of what the planning board approves and then what we inspect later on through the building code approval and pieces like that. So um, many of the concepts we have, Doug and I are having a lot of dialogue on. I probably won't see the finished piece for a while, but conceptually we're in agreement. Um, I'm happy with where they're, uh, some of the improvements they're making with fire alarm systems, uh, access areas, and the flow of the building that overall we're gonna have a, a better fire protection plan than we currently do. So that's the piece that I'm good with. And, and the access between with the walkway and things like that between the two buildings that were good on that? Yeah, my, my evaluation, it, it's, it was a challenge to create. I normally don't even have the ability to require total access with a piece of equipment to every inch of a building. So it, it, as nice as I'd love to say I could do that, that's, that's a little past what I'm, I'm allowed to ask for. Um, practicality, it would have been difficult for us to utilize that access the way it was designed. And so I'm just trying to be practical here. We made some improvements in some other areas, and I think overall the building is going to be safer, and we, we should be good with that. That's good. Thanks, Chief. Please, I'm sorry. I just want to get Chief's sure, perspective, Joe. I touched on it before, our site lighting, the poles and the lighting. Uh, the bulk of that went in in 2012, the lighting of the parking lots. But there was a comment in the letter regarding uh, site lighting, so I thought I'd just take a second and highlight what's associated with this plan. We've got the low baller lighting along this walkway here in brown, and then this walkway here in white. And there will be building mounted packs under that overhang at the doorways and here at this doorway here. So we'll have stuff on the building for safety. We'll have the low baller lighting along the walkways use for those and then you can uh, assess what the parking lot looks like with those poles have been out for five six years now and on that to the lighting phil i don't know if there's if that kind of falls within your review of the lighting aspect of it at all and if you had a chance to um well the we we we, we note that the uh the applicants provided some details however yeah. there's no Photog photogrammetric, you know, evaluation was provided. I'm not sure how how big an issue that is uh, in this area. Um, the the applicant owns the the, the, the closest uh, residence, um, the, the the parcel closest to the portion of the building, and it is behind um, the other uh, the other built the other. The first uh, phase two part of the building. So. 
So that's just one of the items that was on the uh, hearing outline, the lighting. And I don't know if we're looking at this as check the box type of discussion to make sure that the lighting's in a good place or if there's any additional follow-up or information on lighting. No, we feel that the analysis in 2012 dealt with those areas um, to the perimeter of the addition, the <coughs> folks to the northwest, folks to the west, and now it's simply bringing you folks up to speed on what we'll put around the site for safety for pedestrians as they use those walkways and then obviously to, to access the buildings. So what I'm trying to do is, as you're explaining, look at the outline, check off areas that were outstanding here where there's still TBD. So yeah, we, we think that the lighting has been been satisfied. It, and it doesn't sound like there's an issue. There's any issue here. I'll ask the question to the board members, see if they have lighting specific question. I, I do think that we should have this before we move ahead. Uh, and in light of the fact that we're still waiting for some more information on the storm water, uh, I don't think we're able to approve the entire project today. No, there's going to be more information that's going to be so, coming. So why not ask for, uh, it's recommended by our professional, and there are building changes that bring the building closer to homes on Elm Street. Um, let me see if I can respond to that because the planning board already regulated this issue uh, in the prior public hearing and there's been no change to those facilities. If I, if I could clarify my request uh, to be more formal, um, this is a multi-phase project and um, sure we covered the master ex external landscaping and lighting issues uh, but as this phase of the construction brings uh, the whole project closer to some homes on Elm Street, why not provide the, the study that our professional is asking for? Uh, because you guys feel it's okay, but I think most of the board is new, and I would feel more comfortable seeing that that everything's all in line with our expectations. Well, I think I might close before you go, I might close the gap. On the uh, plan that was submitted earlier, the external lighting on the addition, was that part of that yes. plan? Yes, and, and that, that external lighting on the plan that was submitted with the application was approved by the planning board. Okay, so the only additional lighting that would be added, or, and it might tell me if it was included or not, is that basically between the two additions? Correct. Okay. I mean, unless Phil thinks it my opinion here, unless Phil thinks it's absolutely necessary, I don't think I'd want to burden the applicant with another analysis, but I don't Because we're looking at just the interior lighting, but Phil, I'd love to get your point of view. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not as concerned. Um, you know, obviously you want to make sure it's even, it's not, you're not going to bright spots and stuff like that, so, um, so that, that's the benefit of having the analysis done. So just so, to clarify, can yeah. I ask a quick question? Please. It's external lighting internal to the site. Is Correct. That what yes. Okay. It, it, I'm just going to clarify. It's the air. When you point the area we're talking, it's basically the green area between the two buildings. Correct? That's the any new lighting is in that green area and not along the perimeter of the building that was approved earlier. So if I can update my view on this then, as they were saying, the next property over they already own and the lighting would most affect that property if it's, it is anything out of sorts. Uh, so Elm Street is not a, so much a concern on this. Thank you. So are we okay with the lighting? Yes. 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 Yeah, and the bollards are, are contained units that direct the light to the yeah, to the ground. The light down and they're, they're, yes, they're mm -hmm. thirty inches tall. Yeah. Can I can I just ask a question? I I, I presume it's not a uh, I presume it's something that the applicant would want to do for him th themselves to make sure the lighting is in keeping with the rest of the lighting. There's no bright spots. How how substantial is the additional analysis for the lighting? The lighting that, that is being added during this phase is um, minor lighting around the building and it, it in no way could be construed to, to going off-site. 
Okay, and I think all that's what all on site. Yes, and I think that's that's the um, what the, the design criteria that the planning board looks at is the, the lighting off, that that flows off site, and none of this lighting would be flowing off site. Um, all of the existing lighting that could potentially um, go off site has been reviewed by the planning board and approved under the prior phase. Thank you. Lighting, we good? I think we're good. All right. Uh, landscaping, all right, so I think Joe provided an overview of the landscaping. Are there any questions from planning board members on the landscaping for that? I do have one, and I brought it up before. I think I'd just like to move forward with it a little bit more as far as the adding a, a berm curb to along um, West Main Street in front. I, I, I would like to suggest that we just add that as one of the, um, the conditions. Mm -hmm. I think you guys were fairly receptive to it. It's just a soft berm, nothing fancy, nothing expensive with granite or anything like that, just an asphalt berm. In front of the sidewalk. Is that something Asphalt. that the applicant would be open to? Um, yeah, we would. Uh, uh, I assume that at, at some point we're going to discuss the conditions with the applicant, which is item number ten, and um, we would be um, inclined to, to listen to your proposal and, and evaluate it at that time. But at this time, I don't see any problem with that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Phil wants to speak. I think. I, I know that was discussed at the last meeting, but uh, I would just caution, I would just have your engineer just take a peek at see how it, that affects stormwater runoff from the road and how that's collected that's ultimately. And, and, and to that point, if I may, um, we had some discussion about the stormwater catch basin in the front of the, in front of the building that was not working correctly. Is that something that has been looked at? And, continues to be looked at? Yeah, I think uh, CONCOM is taking the lead on that, and, and it, that's actually uh, um, under consideration and discussion with CONCOM. Yeah. Can okay. you show us the location of that, just so we know what we're talking about? It's uh, maybe, maybe you Someone. can show us. Oh, no. uh, uh, Jody, you want to show them where that is? I'm not sure what you're referring to. There, 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 is a, there is a catch basin out in front of, I believe it's uh, Elms, uh, West Ma East Main Street? Yes. yes. Right? West. West. West, Street. West Main Street. Um, it's West Main Street. So there's a there's a catch basin that is not flowing properly, um, and there's always been water catched into that basin, and we have have approached that on, on several different occasions for that. This structure right here out in front of the building. Uh, I I I really can't see it from here, but yes, I believe. That's what we were talking about on one of our meetings. I just just to support that, I think it's the whole reason that the storm water is still left open. That there was a that issue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That structure is supposed to function as a rain garden and slowly absorb that water uh, into the ground. So after the storm, there should be for a short time should be uh, storm water collecting in that rain garden, and then we'll enter the drop inlet if it's not absorbed into the ground and head over to this basin in this location there. So there should be some water for a short period of time in that in that rain garden, which is that elliptical shape all along here. If if I may refer to Phil on this, it, Phil, it wasn't there a discussion about it not working properly um, at uh, not this last meeting, but the meeting before that. So um, so there is a, a the large detention basin in the rear uh, was observed several, several times at the beginning of this review process, and it, can, it, it, it contained water, and there was water flowing into it. I think that's part of what, what the, the design team is working on to figure out exactly. We have a pretty good idea what, where that's coming from, okay. but I think that's probably the issue that, that we had raised earlier, and it wasn't a catch basin in the front. Okay. Yeah, so unless, I think it's just a miscommunication. Okay. So it's in the right building. That sounds yeah. familiar, right? Okay, yeah. That, that, re that refreshes my memory. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. So the only open issue with the berm is just to make sure that the drainage from the road is, is fine. Correct. And maybe we kind of want that in with the stormwater management piece when sure. we get that all completed. Sure. We can kind of have that added in. <clears throat> Utilities? I still, have, I don't know if that's where we kind of stopped last time, but I still have it as an open 
issue last meeting when we talked about the upgrades that were made in 2012. Um, so just an admin question, Mr. Project Leader. Um, yes, sir. We're, so we're checking off landscaping, correct? Yes. Okay. As far as I know, unless there's any other issues from the board members or um, the public on Thank you. landscaping. No, no. Well, would that last bit that I brought up have any affiliation to the landscaping? Landscaping. Because it is a, um, as you referred it to as a what? Rain. Rain, rain garden. garden. Rain garden. Oh, right. the, the rain garden was I, yeah, I kind separate. of. Yeah, lump it under. I mean, I, I but I but it, but it, but I still think that that is that in the form of landscaping or not. What what is the issue though? Well, I'm just I'm just asking if it's functioning properly and it's doing its 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 cause. What, what yeah, is the it? item that I think has been under discussion as is the back. having a problem is the back and it, not the front. Right, but would this would, would this new building impact any of that to the front? No, no. Okay, all right. Correct. Right. 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 Okay. Great. All right. Thank we're you so much. Um, utilities. I believe the only on outstanding issue with regard to utilities was uh, the Department of Public Works granting an approval for the municipal water usage. And John Westerling sent along an email this afternoon. Uh, Jennifer was CC'd in that. Is that our request is approved? Okay. All right. So I'm going to technically leave that open until that data information comes to our board at the next meeting, but assuming that everybody kind of John checked the box and Jennifer checked the box. And so is that kind of like a half check? <laughs> That's a, a circle with a check mark next to it. It's just a matter of making sure that it's in I, I, I think the record. To, 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 to formally approve it, I think I'd like to have the documentation. Did, didn't we have a uh, question as to water supply and, and sewage, whether or not the internal pipes were big enough or had the capacity to handle? Sewer was approved previously, and the outstanding issue was water, which was resolved today. The sewer, um, granting of the sewer increase, was in the original packet filed with the board okay. when we started down this road back in May. Okay. I'm just looking through what I see in that. This stuff from beta, so I'm sure you guys are right. But, uh, Could that be right, Phil? I don't know. I'll just check. Uh, I know I know the I thought we had a question about the internal piping. Well, we did have a discussion on that, um, but as he just ah. um, brought to our attention that that it has been as a now approved that they have the water um, resource that they need. Correct. For supply. Yeah. Right. Why? Well, and the infrastructure was updated in 2012 for the two additions. We don't anticipate any problem with piping the sewer or the water. To, now to you for, for the question that I yeah. posed to you. Yeah, the, the, the sewer was approved early on the project, and we're waiting for word on the water. So mm -hmm. if they have it, then I think it's... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It looks like that's one SP3. Okay. Any other questions on utilities from the group? Um, construction management we checked off, reviewed by other boards. CONCOM, I believe they're meeting October 2nd. Is that correct? Correct. We're hoping to make headway here tonight and make that a wrap up next week. So the goal now is to come to a meeting of the minds with Beta Group and be able to inform that group next Monday evening. And then be able to, and what is, just what is outstanding with CONCOM right now? Stormwater, because the changes to the basin involve buffer zone. As soon as we get the go ahead from beta, I think conservation will be allowed to act. It all revolves around stormwater, doesn't it? So this is the same basin that we're just discussing in the back of the building? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They've been, a, they've been kept abreast of all our progress as well. Thank you. And we've already kind of talked about design review board. Um, any other questions be from the board members before I move on to number nine, public comments, discussion on the <coughs> plan revisions, or I'm not sure we need to Just wanted to clarify. Um, so the stormwater is an open issue as far as beta is concerned with us, as, right? So we can't. We can't seal that deal tonight. No. That's right. Correct. You, you no. were just saying that you wanted to, you know, tee up success next with the CONCOM, but we don't really have what we need tonight, I think. That's correct. Okay. Right. So you're okay with us 
you know, waiting for that to happen. Well, just as a record, we can't approve a, that there might be revisions to the plan, and we have to approve a plan, and since we don't have a final plan in front of us, we can't approve it. Right. So even if, just from a technical point of view, if all the issues were taken care of, but they hadn't put it in the plan yet, it would, we'd have to wait till the next meeting for that. Okay. There are also a couple outstanding items from the beta letter, mm -hmm. uh, dated on September 19th, that I'm sure will be resolved by the time the next meeting rolls around, specifically around stormwater management. That's my hope. I'm sure the applicants hope as well. Any other questions, board members? Anything outstanding before we jump into, uh, or should we even jump into public comments at this point? And design review, or do we want to wait? Uh, if there's anyone here. Suggest I, I, we can, bro yeah, we're going to definitely open yeah. it up. But um, I, I think maybe we should wait on that. Um, I make a motion to wait on on the uh -huh. public um, comments Just on the grounds of. I, 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 I would prefer we move along yeah. and and actually get to item number ten. Uh, well, we will we will move along, I, I believe. But I mean, as far as public comments discussion. Well, we can have public comments now and then. Revisit any public comments just on the changes that come in All right. at the stormwater. That'll plan. be fine. Yeah. So I'd like to open it up to uh, any public comments. Um, anyone in the audience have anything they would like to share? Right. Seeing none, uh, I'm going to check the box off on the public comments section. Doesn't that box uh, always stay open though at each hearing? I mean, yeah, I, it, uh, I it will. Think at the next okay. meeting, right. Mary I just, want, I just yeah. wanted to clarify. Until the hearing is closed, yeah. Okay. Entertain public. It's always an open forum for public uh, comments and consideration. Um, conditions of approval <coughs> with the applicant. Um, so we have five, seven of them. Perfect. Got them. Must do yours, Jenna, and then the Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, uh, so we have in front of us a number of conditions, uh, proposed conditions for the board to consider as part of this process, the approval process. There may be others, and I think one that we'll add is confirmed, Dave, um, with that. Uh, number one, the applicant shall be responsible for mitigating all construction-related impacts, including erosion, siltation, and dust control in a timely manner. Number two, the applicant shall regularly remove construction trash <coughs> and debris from the site in accordance with good construction practices. No tree stumps, demolition material, trash, or debris shall be burned or buried on site. Number three, in the event that the amount of snow on the site exceeds the amount that can be accommodated safely in the snow storage areas indicated on the site plan, the excess snow shall be removed from the parking area. Four, mechanical equipment or other utility hardware on the roof, grounds, or buildings shall be screened from view from the ground. Five, the Director of Municipal Inspections inspects site plans under construction for compliance with the approved decision of site plan review. If the Director of Municipal Inspections determines that at any time before or during construction that a registered professional engineer or other such outside professional is required to assist in the inspection of the stormwater management system, or any other component of the site plan, the applicant shall be responsible for the cost of those inspections. Six, in accordance with 2010-138 of the zoning bylaw, the applicant shall provide a performance guarantee in the amount of $3,000 to the town prior to the commencement of construction pursuant to this decision. The guarantee shall consist of a deposit of money or negotiable securities in the form selected by the planning board to guarantee that any unforeseen problems which arise, such as erosion and sedimentation, and to the correction of the site lighting problems are addressed. The funds will be held by the town and returned to the applicant upon completion of the project. And number seven, construction may occur only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, Saturdays between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. pursuant to chapter 141, article one of the town of Hoppington general bylaws. Uh, and there's a eighth proposed condition, uh, and we'll have to flush out the wording of that on the uh, berm curve in the front. I, I would uh, r like to propose adding one just to uh, condition that the lighting, as mentioned, will all stay on site, which I assume it will. But Any issues? 
Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was say, any issues, can, right? Can, can I just clarify um, uh, Ms. Kramer's um, request is that that is um, under number six. Lighting. Um, no, I'm, I'm referring to your number nine. Yeah. Under lighting. That uh, is, we clarified that it's the phase three lighting that's being constructed under this. Uh, oh, yes. Under this yeah. phase. Yes, thank you. We'll, we'll actually, for eight nine, we'll actually put some wording in place and you guys can have a chance to review that um, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, can, it, is it, would it be convenient to send me a copy of, of that before the next proposal? I think so. I think that's fair. Yeah, I'll get with Jennifer and we'll. Colby will work with something up on that. Any other questions from the applicant on the proposed conditions as stated? No. Um, I think that's probably where we're going to kind of draw the line here this evening, gentlemen, because uh, we're still waiting on the stormwater management update. Um, and I think that'll address many of the other questions um, yet to be resolved from the beta letter. Um, and the next meeting, which we should probably get on the books, Kobe, um, we'll also have the update from CONCOM as well. I just want to add, I think the, the curbed sidewalk um, proposal uh, yeah. condition. Um, we already heard that it's conditional on the stormwater, so do we yeah. want to like keep that one on hold until we know what the stormwater piece is? No, I think we need to. We need your condition in order to evaluate it under stormwater. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. We can revoke it if it's in. Yeah. We might have to. <coughs> we might have to wordsmith that one a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to drive by tonight. And I'll <coughs> determine. <laughs> Could you put a light? See where they're okay. See where the drainage is. <laughs> All right, any other questions from board members, Muriel? <laughs> um, I, I, I'm sorry, I think that there was a, just at least a, an open category with the police department and the fire department. Did I misread that this, in some of the? Uh, I lose it here. Uh, um, what do we have with uh, other, power, other comments? Number five, we checked off. I'm trying to see if there's anything else by that. I apologize. I'm fire department is sad. Or yeah, yeah. Unless the chief, there well, any other issues? Or? So there was, there was some, there was travel through the site, chief. But there was also capacity issues. I so I, th I think to the first part, um, the reference to the building code and the building inspector for the site construction plan. Um, Fire safety CMR connects me to the building inspector that way, so that's how I would kind of address that. I've had talk with Doug that that'll be kind of an ongoing concern. What I was trying to learn from the building, uh, excuse me, from the planning board is where you put conditions into something or whether you just let the building code work in its natural form. So I think that kind of answers, it'll just work through the building code in its natural form. I have a connection to talk with the building inspector, review how they do their site construction, make sure we maintain access the whole time. If we run into a problem, we go back through and enforce through the building code way. So I'm just always open to see if there's other avenues so far I think we're met. Okay. Um, the capacity issue was in a broader sense that I talked to the planning board in general for all of the building that we're doing in town where my ability to um, serve Golden Pond or other establishments in the, uh, that I've reported to our board that we are at capacity so any time you're looking at projects, I'm trying to see whether you want to evaluate that part or not. Thank you. Mariel, does that answer your question? Uh, it, it does answer my question, but I guess it leaves it open for the planning board whether or not we want to um, or need to in terms of planning and public safety um, contemplate capacity issues more directly with projects, particularly projects that may or may not put a, a greater drain on the services that are needed. Yeah, I think for future consideration, but for this pro this project was approved <coughs> with this, so uh, any th other future projects, you know, I think it's this a good a project, point. This project, these additional beds <coughs> are being approved now. It was part of a, a plan that was approved in 2012. I'm, I'm oh. very aware of that, yeah. but things have changed in this piece. If they had done this piece in 2012, the capacity question wouldn't be, have changed. 
but I think the capacity question um, is something that we need to be sure we have comfort with. And then the comments through you, Mr. Chair, just to talk to that a little bit. I, the both the fire and the police are managed by the town manager, and I would think that if there were any issues, that we would get a message from the town manager to to be concerned about this type of thing going forward. I mean, that's just my opinion. Then through, through the chair, and I think <laughs> if Jennifer were here tonight, she would be saying that what is in front of us is what <coughs> we we should be looking at, and we're not. In the, in the overseeing of the bylaws that are taking place, that we only approve what we, was it, is within our scope of approval. So we gotta keep that in mind as well. So yeah. through you, Mr. Chair, um, it is completely within our purview to um, take into account the impacts of development from a planning perspective on town services. And I, I mean, if I can just Chair, say, there is no objection from the fire chief that he's not capable of servicing the site. So I think it's a much bigger picture <coughs> that we have to look at uh, going forward. And I think it might be something good for us to maybe set aside some time in the future to, you know, put it on the agenda and to look at services and how we we get it, but I think applying it to this particular project when the uh, fire chief has not stated it as an issue related to this project. I um, believe that he has. Mr. Chairman, I just, I, can I just ask, um, within the context of, of uh, Ms. Kramer's comments, what are we talking about in capacity? What, what does that mean? It was specifically with ambulance services. I remember it, Chief, if no, you would no, like to speak to it. What do you mean by capacity? What are we talking about here? It's taxing the services of the town on, on that but aspect. Before we go for it, let's, I think the Chief may be able to close the issue for now. So um, I have an understanding that the uh, capacity conversation is probably broader. I think uh, in the spirit of the conversation we're having here tonight for Golden Pond and something I do with the staff or whatever, um, they may make a, um, one of the issues I'm just working on fresh now is they have like a, a policy issue for lifting. And um, so they look for us to assist them with lifting right now. So that's something that it's, it changes what their demand would be to us and, and, and I will now return dialogue to them. How can we work together? My goal is to be able to say yes, I can help everybody with the requests. I'm trying to figure out how I connect to planning, connect with our town to say how it's because if there's a service not, if I'm lifting for this customer, the other customer might have a, an, an impact to that. So it's kind of a, it is a broader, I'm not trying to bring this up at one customer's cost when they're trying to do their business. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it is real, they have a certain number. I have brought this up at some of our other uh, customers that are, that are adding more demand for service to our community. So I think it's just an ongoing conversation. Just specific, and, and I have, I've been having a healthy dialogue with the owner at Golden Pond, but as they change some of their business modeling, um, we can have internal conversations. They might do some occupancy changes in the future, and, then, and again, you'd have these same, I'm hoping with the planning board and our community, you have the same dialogue. So hopefully that's making could, sense. Could you stay? Through the chair, I have a question, or through the <coughs> um, Maybe it's more statement, but also a question for the chief. Um, I think Muriel has every right to bring up the question, and it's in the purview of the planning board uh, for this project. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens in an entire town. Uh, at the same time, uh, Mr. Clintz has been very uh, proactive in dealing with the town on issues like this, and, and we have a very uh, good uh, fire chief that is concerned about things uh, like this. So we, as a board, we do have this responsibility to ask the right questions. Um, um, I, my question for the chief is lifting, is, is that mean uh, ambulance rides or I'm not sure what you mean, uh, services? So it might be a public safety request um, for, for assistance. So any type of request is? Okay. Yep. So that, that type of example, it's something that I'm just Sorry. starting to enter into dialogue with Golden Pond right now on. It's something that other um, assisted living facilities it tends to be, a, you know, a, a change in the uh, <coughs> business model right now, whether they lift or not lift patients, probably. Thank you. So that 
to you, Mr. Chair. No. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to, uh, because I'm a little confused here, and, and, I, and I, I truly want to understand what this issue is before. Um, Be before we get into that, I was going to ask the chair, the chief, a question before he sat down. Stay there. What, what, what the concerns of, the, of these two individuals on the board are? Is it, and it sounds like to me, is that is that the fire department is having um, an issue um, in its capacity to meet the uh, objectives of the town um, and and the taxpayers in the town, and so I'm I'm at a loss to understand what potentially the planning board. Could impose upon Golden Pond. Is, are you suggesting that um, the fire department only respond to nine out of ten calls to Golden Pond? I mean, nope, nobody, what are you suggesting? Nope, nobody has said that. No, I know that, but, I'm, but I'm, that. I'm asking, I'm trying to ask what is, what are these two individuals attempting to, to raise as an issue with respect to this to this public hearing? So, I'll so I can properly respond to those. Okay. Before they do, Dave, you have the floor. Sorry, sorry, just before the chief said, and, and along those same lines, I wanted us as a board to stay more focused. And I think there's a administratively there's a process in place for the town manager that you would meet annually with your budget and ask if you needed more resources. That would be the place to do it. I don't think this is the right forum for it. Okay. That's fair. Right. Uh, but, but, so I, I'm going to take that in, in two forms. So um, as we plan and, and are in responsible for planning um, different uh, developments in town. Um, it is my understanding that we need to be mindful of um, the entire town's ability. For example, we have discussed, I'm jumping here, I'm sorry, we've discussed the impact of development on the schools and we want input from the schools. And maybe that's the better way to say it is that if there's a, a, a metric or a formula or a uh, way that you can give us feedback as we consider developments, any development, not just Golden Pond, um, with their their particular parameters of need on emergency services. That is probably something that would be not only of interest to me, but important to contemplate as a planning board. Um, and. I'm not so confident that there is a system in place to handle that, but if there is, I'm, I'm very willing to be enlightened by that. But I think that, you know, in terms of being a planning board and uh, ensuring that new development is uh, managed successfully and capably, these are considerations that we need to be thinking about in terms of town services, not just emergency services. In this case, of course, there's no school impact, um, but you know, road impact, traffic impact. We think about these things all the time on the planning board. Right, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a better understanding now, um, uh, <coughs> and, and uh, let me just say that the site plan, and I, I'm not sure. I know Mrs. Kramer is, is new to the to the planning board. Um, the planning board has a, a variety of, of responsibilities. Um, under uh, uh, Mass General laws, um, some of them uh, are relate to um, subdivision control. Um, others uh, deal with the responsibilities under Section Five of uh, uh, 40A, and where you provide comments to the public hearing uh, at town meeting and, and your recommendations. Um, another uh, part of your responsibility is pure regulatory, uh, which does not include planning, and that aspect is called site plan review. Um, you're not here to plan uh, under site plan review. That's not your responsibility. And uh, that responsibility actually fell to the Board of Appeals when it granted a use permit for this project. And uh, with respect to, to Mrs. Kramer's comments that you have responsibility with respect to managing this development, um, I, I respectfully dis disagree. Um, that, that responsibility is not yours. Uh, your responsibility is simply to ensure that the site is developed in a satisfactory manner, not to, to determine um, how to manage that, uh, um, that use. Um, I'd be pleased to, to uh, provide further information to the board on that uh, 
but I, I, I think um, the board has an understanding of our position at that point. Yeah. I mean, there's one more aspect. I don't disagree with anything you or, or she have said, um, but from this side of the table beyond that, from the planning board perspective, uh, if we hear that there's a concern, no matter what the project is, uh, we also have a role in <coughs> planning. So if there is an issue where there needs to be money spent for additional ambulances or services, that's something that we can understand and help support going forward that helps the entire town, not just this project, not just any project, but the entire town. So it, it's, as sitting from this side, it's what can we do to help? And that's, I think, what we're getting at. Right. So uh, I'll, unless there's any other further comments, um, I'd like to kind of bring this in because we're near the bottom of the hour. Um, I don't think Mrs. Kramer is dictating how. Um, we got one more issue. Uh, I, I mean, maybe the same as what you're going to say. I was just going to suggest that since budget season is coming, we could write a letter to the town manager expressing that we're concerned about the town meeting the capacity for fire and police uh, and sc school capacity and make sure that they're aware of how many projects are being approved. Just to go, yeah. that's why I suggested okay. that we put it on the agenda as a specific, uh, unrelated to your project, okay. mm -hmm. just related to town services so we can get a report from the uh, the, the safety officials and draft such a letter. And I would agree. I, I, let me just kind of wrap sure, it up so, here. Yep. Um, I, I would agree with that. Sometimes we're a little slow here on the board. There's issues that are broader in context. It doesn't necessarily going to have an adverse impact on the proposal uh, from the applicant. Um, we understand what your the focus is and what you're brought before us. Um, hopefully you can kind of get a sense in terms of what Ms. Kramer has identified and some of the other members have looked at in more of a holistic approach. Um, that being said, um, are there more questions or clarifications that the board can provide to you? No, I think that uh, uh, I think we are under, under a clear understanding of where we stand, and, and uh, hopefully next time we'll be back with uh, progress at ConCom, and, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, receiving a draft for the two additional conditions of uh, language, okay. and uh, hopefully we can put this to bed next time. I would agree. The only thing I would add also is the update on the storm mitigation, stormwater mitigation piece, which I think is probably there. Uh, the CONCOM piece, the two conditions, uh, and any, uh, any updates to the beta uh, outstanding items that were identified in the letter from the September 19th. Uh, and I think that's what I had for the next meeting. Kobe, when can we potentially? Well, wide open for October 16th. Let's put them right first, in, first on the date, first on the docket, 7.30 on the 16th. 16th? October 16th. How much time do you think? Uh, boy. Stormwater's the big issue. I was, I, I'd give it an hour. If it's less than that, then it's less than that. But I, I'd hate to be squeezed. We'll send out for cookies or something. <laughs> I'd hate to but squeeze I, it and, yeah. and put it on a, a subsequent meeting. I'd like to be able to close it out as quickly as possible, if at all possible. Okay. I just want to, I, I would hope that uh, we could finalize it on the 16th. I just want to let the board know that uh, I am not going to be available from the 20th through um, November 2nd. So, so noted. hopefully we can resolve everything next uh, time. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. Do our best. On, the f on a functional note, uh, are you guys finding it easier <coughs> where CONCOM uh, -Con meets opposite weeks than we do? Because I think that when they're meeting October 2nd, then our next meeting, line, the data lines up pretty well, I, I hope. Right, we're, 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 we're back on the site, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully it works. Um, I think I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Uh, continue. Uh, continue. Uh, continue. Continue. <laughs> continue the public hearing. Ah, I stand corrected. To continue the public hearing until October 16th. So moved. At moved. 7.30. Second. Uh, it has to have a time specific at 7.30. I think it mentioned 7.30. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstain? Well, there's a second. Do you want to go ahead and second that? Well, there was a second. There was there? Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Carries. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Now we have five minute break. Five minute break. In, right? John, we're baking the break. How much are you guys appreciate? Page yeah, that was impressive. That I'm might be, that could be a record. Are you all
Yeah, you know what? It was a full Do we have a copy of this? Just going to go out and see if stuff that they have up here. Do we have a copy of this? You get the next one. I don't know if I saw that. Why is it in charge? What page you I'm just I'm looking. Here we go. Clean energy collector. If it is what I'd, I'd like to do, uh, if possible, I want sort of comments, is open and continue the public hearing on 147 Lumber Street just for a few minutes and maybe we can consider the request for minor modification to plan for Box Mill Road. But if any member of the board thinks they'll have extensive discussions on it, I won't do that. Discussions on which one? On Box, request Box from Hill. my Fox Hill, Fox Mill Road. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with that. I'm okay, okay. I'm okay with so that. So if okay. we can, uh, I'll make a motion to open and continue this public hearing um, for a few minutes while we consider Box Mill Road minor modifications. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. <coughs> and thank you. A request for minor modification to plan for Box Mill Road. I'm Richard Barbieri and I have Box Mill Road going. For those of you who were not on the board, it's a little three lot road on the Lane Street. Since I got the approvals, uh, the board released the lots, I got two foundations in. The only change so far to that subdivision is the town put in the back piece for a little connection to the high school for the uh, cross country road. What I'm trying to do now is when I came before the board, as you walk down that road on the left side, it's kind of a farmer's wall. And it's a tree line. On the right side, it was just pieces of it. Originally, I was going to replace that whole farmer's wall around the whole thing. However, the farmer's wall, once we took the trees down and everything, looks pretty bad. So what I want to do is take the farmer's wall, remove it on the left side of the road, push back two feet onto people's property rather than straddling the right of way. And the people's property you're talking about are the homes the you're developing, homes, right? Correct. What I like to do is make a masonry, actually a stone wall, cement, all ways with aprons to each house around to the end of the cul-de-sac, and that's it. I don't want to bring it all the way back here. There's no houses on it, right? It's just retention. Just a quick question through the board. The masonry will be behind, inside the wall, not showing, or? Excuse or me? The, the um, cement that's used? Yeah, the cement would show. It would show, okay. Yeah, right. But the rocks would show, right. and then it's not, okay. Right. So, so is that, if I may, through a check, is that, have you already talked to the people that were going to? No, I, I have no customer check. <laughs> Everybody that comes up there, there's two things. They don't like the old buildings that you can get now. They all look at the snow wall. I mean, it's essentially pictures that don't get Yes. Yes. It's not that. If I may, the, the one, plan is there. I don't know if the big one is there. Like two feet off the pavement. Yeah. It's just, you know, it starts on a park line. The thing on top is a big rock. So I'm trying to, when I bring this back, it's a seven foot high in the tape with some grass. You know, it'll look much better. It'll cost a lot more money, too. But sure. I think it'll look much better. If, if I, I can. think there's a need for a wall on the right side. It just goes down to the attention. Here. If I made through the through the chair, um, back when we did the site walk, it was so overgrown you couldn't exactly tell where the stone walls were. And then what you could see, yeah, they're three to nine feet wide because they, it wasn't a, a long road. It was more like a back area for carriage and a, a garage that was there. So. Right. Yeah. So it'll be, it'll be open on the right-hand side, right, and you're just going to put that mason wall, the proposal is to have that mason wall on the left-hand side. On the left hand I'm side, left -hand it's going to go up just like the plan shows up around the cul-de-sac in the last driveway. Then on the right side, there'd be nothing, just grass. And eventually, I got to put the, tr the trees in that were on the plan originally. If I may, it looks to me like it's going to be on the side where the, the new homes are. The, the existing Correct. homeowners, it's not going to be near their property. No. Okay. 
any other comments? Any comments from the audience? Yeah. Say so thanks for having the cross country trail through there. Yeah. One of the things oh, yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, we have to do two things. We need to determine if it's the modification is major or minor. If minor, the board can review and vote with no further notice. If major, the board needs to schedule a new hearing and notices need to go out. So I'll I make think a motion to get to that this is a minor modification. I second the motion. Discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Is there anybody from the public, though? Yeah, we had asked. Oh, I'm sorry. If there was a, any public comments. I would just say make it minor. So now this is a real Minor. Problem. And then uh, is there a motion to uh, approve the requested changes? I make a motion to approve the Second. request of changes. Second. Discussion? Dis discussion. Uh, it's not going to impact the cross country trail at all. <laughs> That's it? Doesn't, it's not going to impact that cross country trail no, no, for the kids. Can they jump over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. All right, that was okay. it. Uh, let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So okay. carry. Yeah. Yeah. Good, luck with, good luck with that. We hope it comes out well. Thank you. If we can have a motion to open the reopen, public, reopen the public hearing. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carry. Um, Looking to commercial solar photovoltaic special permit application and stormwater management permit application, Clean Energy Collective proposed 2.9 megawatt commercial solar photovoltaic installation on approximately 11.4 acres of land. Um, and just as a background uh, for those who are here, uh, and normally I would throw this over to Jennifer, is that so the, the people who are here who are neighbors uh, in Massachusetts there are certain laws that apply to uh, solar installations such as this so we as a board do not have the ability to say you can't build this here so just so you know that so the idea is to now work with the proponent and make sure that they fulfill all the obligations that are outlined in the town bylaws related to this. So um, I just wanted to make that because there's always a question of what can be done and what can't be done. And people at times tend to think the planning board can stop anything that happens in town. We don't have that ability. So I think working with the applicant, hopefully we can come up with something that is within the applicant's rights to develop and also doesn't infringe too greatly on, on the neighboring houses. I'll turn it over to the applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Board members, my name is Greg Carey. I'm director of real estate and permitting for Clean Energy Collective. With me this evening uh, are Ben Cherko, uh, the property owner, Ben's family, uh, Doug Carton, who's a project manager with me, at Clean Energy Collective, uh, Stacy Minahan and Tom mm -hmm. McLack, our engineers at Fields and Thomas, and Rich Kleiman from Climate en Energy. Um, before I, I turn the floor over to Stacy and ask her to walk through our plans and our presentation, I just want to spend a quick minute telling you who we are and what we do. Clean Energy Collective is a community solar development company. We're based in Louisville, Colorado. I work in the Worcester office. I've been in the Worcester office uh, for three years now, working with Doug. And basically what we do is we produce clean energy projects across the state. We've developed over 40 megawatts of project uh, throughout the entire state. Community solar is a little different than um, some other solar projects that have been developed in the state. Uh, Clean Energy Collective is a pioneer of community solar. And basically, what we do uh, is we sell the power generated from these facilities to uh, local residents, businesses, and municipalities, in this case, the town of Poppington. And we sell it at a discount 
with no capital investment uh, at all or any fees up front. And it's really geared um, our roofless solar program, uh, which is how we market uh, the power, and I have some information I'll leave with you, uh, is really geared towards uh, those people, those customers who want to support clean energy, but perhaps can't afford to put solar panels on their roof, or they're in an apartment, they're in a condominium, or perhaps a house just isn't suited for solar. So, um, you know, in addition to the benefits of community solar for each of the residents within NSTAR or Eversource territory, which is the entire town of Hockington, there are other benefits uh, the project brings as well, and two of those are increased real estate taxes from the development, like any development, and new personal property taxes. All of the equipment and materials that go into uh, this development, the modules, the panels, the racking system, those are all separately taxed as personal property, and so there's additional revenue that the town is going to see from this project. Um, there are very little impacts from, from solar uh, in terms of noise, no lighting, no traffic, um, and uh, no impact to infrastructure, water or sewer or, or the schools. So there are a great many benefits uh, from a project uh, like this, and obviously we're delighted that uh, Hockington is a green community and has committed to supporting renewable energy and, and we look forward to working with you throughout the process. Uh, and with that, I'll ask Stacy to come in, come up and give you an overview of uh, our plans. Good evening. I'm Stacy Manahan with Bales and Thomas. And I'll give a, a brief overview of um, the project. So the project uh, crosses two parcels of land off Lumber Street um, to this pier. So this is an index sheet from the plan set that we submitted, and then this is um, an overall aerial that zoomed out a bit so that you have a better context. So Lumber Street's here. Um, these <coughs> were formerly Eversource parcels that are now owned um, by Mr. Chirko. So we call the westerly array and the easterly array. The entirety of the two parcels taken together is 41 and a half acres. Of that, only 11.4 um, acres comprises the solar site. Within that, nine and a half acres is fenced, and the solar project is a 2.9 megawatt um, facility. So what we've asked, what we've submitted is a, a special permit application as well as a stormwater management per permit application to allow the project um, and the SRA components, the vegetative clearing, grading, um, installation of the equipment that's, that's necessary. Um, we've prepared a, or, uh, proposed a stormwater management system to address uh, local and state requirements, and we did receive um, famous peer review comments regarding uh, largely stormwater management as well as a few other aspects. Um, th that's really it in a nutshell. We've really tried to minimize grading on the property. There is some topographic relief, particularly in this portion of the site. Um, there's a maximum 20% slope that the solar panels are, are kind of most functional on. Um, but where we can, we've tried not to grade, um, we've minimized the clearing to the extent that we can while considering the shading and tax to the solar project. Um, and there will be a few plan revisions in the next round. So this was the original set that we submitted to, to the town. We have identified the Conservation Commission's peer review consultant and additional wetland area here. So we'll be shifting these panels out Additionally, we had um, erroneously included some panels within the 75 foot no touch of the Conservation Commission here. We'll be shifting those out. Um, so those are kind of the most significant changes, although they're not that significant. It's just a matter of shifting and then rejiggering the stormwater. Um, a few other changes that we'll be making based on some initial feedback at the Conservation Commission and with town staff was raising the fence off the ground six to eight inches to allow for more wildlife passage um, and some more administrative items such as ensuring that we have, you know, we've proposed within the construction sediment basins, um, which will eventually become the permanent basin, we would supposed to leave a foot of material over the top that could then be excavated out to ensure that it doesn't become compacted. We can also add tilling to an additional 12-inch depth there to you know, address that, and I had spoken with Phil about that earlier. 
um, and adding a seed mix specification to the plan as well. So that's kind of the you know, 200 foot view of the project. Um, we did receive peer review comments, as I mentioned. Um, I appreciate Phil's review and had a call with him this afternoon, so I anticipate that we'll be working through those to, to address his comments. We're awaiting um, Lucas Environmental's report for the Conservation Commission. Um, I'm meeting him in the field tomorrow. Um, as well, so I anticipate we'll have that after tomorrow to respond to, to as well. So I'm happy to answer questions you may have or discuss any aspects of it in more detail if you'd like. Any overall questions? We'll get into specific questions when we get to the uh, detailed discussion. I have two overall uh, things. Uh, one's a very thorough package. Thank you. It's probably the most thorough we've gotten. And um, uh, you're you're going to the Port of um, Conservation Commission on the second as yes, well. Yes, that's our next hearing for the commission. Excellent. And we had met with them uh, last Monday as well for the initial hearing. Thank you. We'll be opening up to the audience in a, in a little while. Any other board? I have two early questions. Um, there's a residence and a business on this. That's the intended the go forward position. So there is a single family home on the property. Mm -hmm. um, and this portion of the project area would be um, leased to CEC for use as the solar facility. Okay. Um, uh, and is the entire property or uh, how much of it is wooded? How much of that is trees that have to come down? It's wooded um, for, except for that, I should have mentioned, we're reusing the existing driveway as our entrance drive, but mm -hmm. otherwise the 11.4 11, 11 acres of the site is wooded currently. Um, we've maintained the Conservation <coughs> Commission setbacks and as I mentioned, tried to minimize the limit of clearing as much as we could uh, given the proposed use. But it is, it, there isn't any really way to limit the clearing. I mean, it's, it's really about clearing it to put the, the use in there. Right, to, to um, reduce the shading to the yeah. minimum that can occur and still have the solar panels be functional. Thank you. And one similar question. How much of this, if any, <coughs> excuse me, is visible from um, Lumber Street at all? Um, well, it's a very large setback from Lumber Street. Um, and it's all wooden. So this is Lumber Street here. This is the entrance drive. We'll be connecting underground along the drive and then overhead to the utility poles here. Um, but then from Lumber Street, this is really the only frontage and I can scale off that distance because I don't know it off the top of my head. And is there any elevation change from the roadway to the, to where the... Um, from here to here? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't mean to interrupt, but you cannot see this from Lumber Street. Yeah, I mean, I, that would be my answer. I just want to make sure that, that I'm giving you an I'd like to add. Well, that's, I mean, that's uh, any, any type of public roadway, I'd be interested yeah, in. Road. I, I'd like to, well, I had a follow up to that as okay. well. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm more, more curious about. Uh, what the uh, the neighbors are going to see. Okay. Uh, when we get into site layout, okay. let's. Do, I, I want kind of big overall here. We'll look at the outline. We'll okay. get into site layout. Let's then get into the specific of what can be seen. So from Lumber where. Street, it's about 450 feet to our current limit, but this is going to shift easterly further. So it, it's well set off from Lumber Street. Um, we don't have to park all the way over to the street, but um, it generally slopes down at a you know moderate slope. I would anticipate that up by Lumber Street it's a little bit higher um, because this flattened system that's there. Back here. Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you. Let's get comments now for any additional comments Just at the this only, stage. The only other one that I read that it has me concerned is that it, uh, and I want to understand the implications is it it's entirely water resource protection overlay district, is that right? Or mostly? The I didn't believe that it was. Tom, do you know that? I thought I read that it I, was. I, I apologize if I'm wrong. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll find it. Yeah. Or maybe it is, but we're meeting the requirements. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it is, we're meeting the requirements. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think we're meeting yeah. Well, they had to do it in the triplicate. Well, why don't we? 
I just, want, I just want to make sure that we understand the implications of that as we go forward, and I'm sure we will. If I, if I could, it might be that a portion of it lies within it. Um, if I could, it says on page six for those, for the planning board members, um, the land is zoned uh, agriculture and is also within the water reser resources protection overlay district. Um, so. The, uh, beta's comment letter or uh, six of our letters? It's, it's the principal planners. Um, it's our planner's letter. Oh, it's our planner's letter to us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. If, if I may, when we get to the stormwater management, uh, that will. We, we have that. Observation. If I may, yeah, why, don't we, why don't we bring Phil up to discuss, because this is a good point yep. to discuss this. Don't want to come up, introduce yourself, and we have additional people here. Uh, for the record, my name is Phil Paradis. I'm a professional engineer, a lead accredited professional, and a certified professional school model quality with Beta Group, the uh, town's consultant for this project. Um, we did look at uh, various aspects of zoning as well as uh, stormwater management, and we note uh, a few of the we had a few comments related to um, kind of the aesthetics. You know, typically we would expect to see um, their equipment that, that you would be able to visually see. They did show uh, some details of the racking, but any of the uh, the uh, switch gear and inverters, etc., um, we would we would expect to see. Um, there is uh, some access issues. This is behind, um, uh, out, out, pretty far from Lumber Street. So we would want a, an auto turn to make sure that the fire trucks can get in and out uh, if that's necessary. Uh, the, um, the site is located in Agricultural A District. Um, it meets most of the, uh, the the lot meets uh, most of the dimensional requirements, except right now it's non-conforming relative to frontage on Frontage Street, but it's not it's not uh, increasing the, the non-conformance um, portions of the project I'm are. Sorry, it's an existing non-conforming lot for frontage. Is that what you just said? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. So um, portions of the pro part uh, par project <coughs> area are within the watershed. Protection District, uh, and they are rendering more than 15% of the area impervious. However, they are providing the uh, infiltration systems, if properly designed, uh, to meet that those requirements. And we would not expect this to generate any kind of pollutant load uh, that would impact the groundwater. Um, so, in the supplementary regulations. Um, there is uh, uh, requirements that for non-residential uses that there be a, a buffer zone around the, the non-residential use in, a, in, the, in the districts. And if you read them on my letter on page two, the bottom, it says, uh, it says a lot which contains a non-residential use in residence A, residence B, <coughs> residence lakefront, or agricultural district shall contain a buffer area at the perimeter of the lot. The buffer area shall consist of trees, shrubs, vegetation, and topographic features sufficient to separate and or visually screen the use from the abutting properties in a residential district and shall not and shall be located on the same lot as the non-residential use. And it further it talks about the, the width required and uh, in 121B, that for uh, for this district, agricultural district, uh, 75 foot wide buffer is required. Um, however, uh, 121E uh, allows for the, the planning board to f to uh, find uh, that a buffer of lesser width would be sufficient to screen and or separate the use from adjacent properties. The width of the buffer may be reduced. In those circumstances, it is, it is the intent of the board not to waive the buffer requirement, rather provide an alternative screening arrangement, such as fencing and planting where possible. 
So that's that's taken right from your bylaw. Uh, I don't think they've addressed that uh, with this plan. Um, and, and so we would, we wouldn't, I think that has to be resolved. Relative to stormwater management, um, as was stated earlier, the, the, the entire, the entire uh, project area is wooded, uh, and they are proposing to obviously clear all the trees, remove the stump, plant uh, grass, and then install um, panels. Um, we would expect that that have at least minimal impact on stormwater runoff. Uh, and so some of the comments we've added uh, are, 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 are kind of technical in nature. Um, and I think we've discussed a few of them as, as we know. So uh, for instance, they are proposed, they are indicating that the, the final condition will be a meadow. Um, however, that would be, if there's no panels or anything like that, that would, um, however, when you get a panel, you know, you're gonna have, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an impervious surface. The water's gonna run off the, the panel and, and then hit the ground. Now, whether, wh how that ground is, is the to topography of that ground will, will d dictate whether it, the water goes back under the panel and kind of infiltrates underneath the panel or will go mm -hmm. parallel with the panels and, and down the site. And I think some portions of the site are, are such that it won't, go, it won't go completely underneath the panel. So it's not gonna f completely function as a, as a, as a storm matter. water. So. And, but we'll, I think we'll work out that with their engineers. Um, so it, anyway, I don't know how technical you want me to go through. I think some of the things, they are proposing uh, two infiltration basins. Uh, one just uh, at the side of the, of the uh, ring. Obviously, I think uh, the majority of this portion of the site slopes down toward the wetland, so they're going to provide an infiltration basin over here. This portion slopes this way, and then this whole site slopes this way, but they have a swale along this edge to direct some water to this, to this infiltration basin. So I think fundamentally that's, that works. However, we would recommend maybe spreading additional you know, infiltration along because this right now uh, all right. flows down to a wetland. It kind of maintains the the the, the environment there. Um, so I, I think that's again something we, we can work through um, as as we go. <coughs> and then there's some obviously some uh, just some maintenance uh, erosion controls uh, issues that that should be addressed, uh, as well as the operation maintenance plan uh, for the project, that there's some technical things that could be addressed. So, in general, we don't, I, I think, we don't see anything that can't be worked through. I think the big thing is, is the buffer issue. So any questions from the board for Phil? Start with Dave and go around. No, thanks. So does the current plan here show a 75 foot butter between, buffer I mean, between all the abutters? It does not. No. Okay, and but that's. If I may, yeah. along that line, because that is actually one of the items in the full butter that I actually noted to make sure to speak with you about tonight. So um, a, a minimum 75 foot, if not more, is um, maintained from the residential properties along Alexander Road for this neighborhood. Um, and, and obviously from Lumber Street. The places where it's not maintained are um, along here, where this is uh, landlocked town-owned land, and here, there's one spot here um, where it's not maintained, where this is the Sportsman's Club. Um, and based on our experience with another solar project in town, um, that buffer zone had not been indicated as applying 
um, to that particular project. And so our kind of understanding or the way we proceeded was that it should be maintained from existing, you know, or potential future residential uses adjacent to the properties. Um, and we'd be looking for the planning board that is input on, on that. Amy, any additional? Um, you bring up a, a question that I, I don't know how to phrase it. You're saying that the, the, the place that it, it doesn't have 75 foot frontage is adjacent to town owned land, landlocked land? Landlocked forested land, yes. Okay. And so you're basing your, your assessment of something previous to what your intention is now? Is that? Uh, with something previous in what regard? With, an, with another solar? Pit? Yeah, so we had done another solar project in town, the Marathon Solar Project, um, before the board and the commission, um, and that 75 foot buffer had not been raised as a comment, and I don't believe it was maintained for that. Um, a portion of that, we provided screening along a portion, and then a portion where the off site um, property was wooded, uh, that buffer was not maintained on our, on our site. Okay, so to that, to that, then, oh, go ahead. Go I was ahead. gonna say it was not raised as a comment at that time, so the project just kind of proceeded as it was. Obviously, it's been raised as a comment this time, so we're looking for the. Is that the one on Hayden Row? Uh, yeah. East Main Street. No, East Main Street. Okay. East Main Street. Yep. Is the, I'm sorry. Is the zoning the same? The zoning, the zoning is the same. That is actually the first thing we went back to check to see yeah. if um, zoning district is the same, and we also checked to make sure the zoning bylaw had not changed since we did the last one. Okay, so you would be looking or seeking relief from the 75 foot. Well, I guess it's a, a question of the interpretation of that requirement, um, whether relief needs to be sought, in which case I believe we would be seeking relief and can submit a supplemental waiver request, or if the intent is um, more for you know, adjacent residential uses, which those two areas are not. Mm -hmm. um, but you're maintaining across the frontage, yeah, up, up there. And that has the 75. Yes. Yeah, a minimum, I believe, is greater in almost every location. Okay, so the, the reason for my questioning is this, is that we have had in the past given um, special permits for whatever people were looking for. And, and as a result, it leads to the next funnel down where somebody says, well, we get it Press for it. this one, and, and now why aren't we getting it? Mm -hmm. So this is what... We, our master plan and all of our bylaws are, are being designed around is that we we forego the liberties of giving it to one person and then having the next person come in and say well you gave it to them so why can't you give it to us and then all of a sudden we have a quagmire of of you know approvals that right we're going to fight about need, yeah if it's going to be granted needing to differentiate so that it's not a blank carte blanche precedent for right. the future right and so so i bring up this again to to ask if the relief is going to be needed, if, and I don't know that yet, because we're, we're, this is your first um, bringing it forth, um, and then you know how how does that impact that site layout? So we haven't gotten right. So there again, so let's that's, bring it up on yeah, the. Thank you. We get to that. Any other? In <coughs> the general. Just one quick one. Um, you mentioned that there's some ongoing maintenance. What kind of maintenance would be required? So moving forward after it's constructed? Yeah. So it'll be mowed um, one to two times per year. I'm sure CEC could jump in with more details, but um, kind of typical panel maintenance, a pickup truck entering the site and checking the equipment, um, mowing it one to two times per year just to keep um, shrubby vegetation within the fenced area down. So it'll be a kind of clover meadow seed mix. Um, and then there's obviously an operation and maintenance plan that we've included for our storm water management system, mm -hmm. which is above and beyond that. Um, we did uh, coordinate with CCC to get a little bit more detail on the maintenance, and we can include that in our response to Phil's comments as well, so that's, that that's you know, written. But essentially, it's equipment maintenance occasionally, very infrequently, and then mowing one or two times a year. Um, when you say equipment maintenance, mm -hmm. it's like, like Squeegeeing the panels, or I mean, what, what no, are we I talking think about? The panels are pretty much self cleaning, you know, with the rain, but I, I don't know if there's any more detail. It's, you know, accessing the electric equipment. Okay. Um, <coughs> just start with this. Yeah, it's very infrequent, but from time to time, if there is a repair that has to be done to a section of the fence, or if there's an electrical issue, 
but we the ag person would go out just to address that problem and then leave the site uh, maybe twice a year. Would there be any kind of transformers or anything on site? There are inverters proposed um, on the project, okay. on the project site. And that's just to take it from DC to AC, right? That's fine. Is there noise associated to that? Um, nothing that's audible beyond um, the kind of property line. So studies have shown that within 50 to you know 150 feet of the spot where you're right at, during the day where it's generating noise, um, that it's inaudible. And at night, there's nothing. Right, nothing. There's no sound at all. Okay. <coughs> um, more of a general question. Um, I see that it's it's zoned agricultural, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just not sure if our I mean how our, our bylaws work um, as far as allowing a commercial activity on a res on a agricultural. Mm -hmm. the, the solar large scale ground mounting is permitted. Is permitted. Fran, mm -hmm. two questions. Um, the first in that do you know in that town land that's landlocked? Yep. Is that used for anything currently? Are there trails on there? For, I don't know. If you have I don't know. Oh, that's that's, that's there one of my questions. There are trails back yes. there? Yes. Okay. And there's an easement for access. Uh, so we'll get into that. That's a good one. I figured there was something back there. And then the second question on the um, easement area along the road there. Um, you talk about up to 75 feet in some areas greater than 75 feet. Along the setback the and the setback. Side. Correct, yeah. correct. Um, is, is that, is there any plans, this might be uh, a question down the road, is there any plans for fencing? I heard fencing from a couple mm -hmm. different people in that area, or is it just going to be the natural vegetation as the, as the space between? Uh, currently we've proposed the natural vegetation and then there is a fence, a chain link fence around the array that does not have a top rail um, to try and lessen the visual impact. Um, yeah, I would like to know more about the town on land, just to see how that fits in. It's a, it's a big, yep. uh, it's a big lot of land. Um, and what many people may not realize is that the frontage on Lumber Street, where the, the driveway is, is you cannot see beyond 20, 30 feet of, of the property. It's a very deep property. Um, and I would like to learn more as, as we go along to see how the uh, Alexander Road side is. Is that, is that the rail bed is there from uh, the former uh, train? I'm not aware of a rail bed in that area. Um, my understanding, um, although I haven't been off site, but from aerials, is that it's you know the residences and their, and their um, properties and yards. And then there's a wetland system largely sure. along this extent with a little bit of upland here and then wooded area. Otherwise, there is a quite a bit of land between where the actual solar panels are and where the neighbor's property is. I mean, yes. the scale of this is really... So this is at 120 scale at the closest point to a home. So not to the property line, but to a, to a home. It's um, 250 feet is the closest one. It ranges from 250 to, you know, over 500. And 75 foot to the property line. Oh, yes. Yes, right. Yeah, well over. Sorry, I'm question. Can I just bring up yep. thing? We have a public hearing at uh, 915. 9.15. So we'll open and we'll do it. If, depending on how many questions, we'll either open and close <laughs> it, or when you finish, then we'll close this and move on. We have to hear from the public, though. No, but we're going to continue the, yeah. okay. the meeting. Uh, I didn't have a question. I was answering Kelly's question. If you're looking with bated breath at me. <laughs> so, I have a couple questions. Um, where exactly on this map is uh, Hayden Road? Uh, uh, um, so, so I'm trying to s it, It's to the far this, right. Does this, this is, butt up against the, the proposed dog park at all? No. No, it doesn't? OK. All right. I'm just, yeah, so I'm just, yeah, I was just trying to. Uh, I don't know if this is. At all. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to understand the, the yeah, scope of this. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if this is helpful. I'm not familiar with what you're referring to, but uh, this is that Alexander Road. Yeah. So um, Hayden Road would be all the way to the right? Right. 
So yes. there's yeah. no. So the rail I'm thinking of is more to the yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I yeah. okay. Right. And then um, in regards to screening, I know there are screening um, uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think someone asked a question earlier about the slope. And I'd like to understand more when we get there about the slope because I'm curious if the neighbors can see the solar farm from their upstairs, second floor. And you know, if I'm just I'm curious what kind of screening requirements we have in that respect. I understand that there will be screening requirements at a lower level, but um, I know we're saying that uh, you know it might not be visible from their yard, but from an upper level. And understanding that slope, I think, is very important. Do you think we should do a site walk for this? I was just going to say the same thing. Yeah. 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 I do. I'm very concerned. I'll double that, especially if you're in Butter, lives on Alexander. Um, we've done this a couple times. I think we can take some learning <coughs> from these um, and making sure that those are the people that are abutting this are not adversely impacted. Uh, somebody want to propose a date for a site walk? Typically Saturdays at 9 a.m. I can. Um, this is coming Saturday. Is that too soon? Uh, this Saturday. We've got. What are the Saturdays, Kobe? Oh, geez. So the Saturday <laughs> is Columbus Day weekend. So. The 30th. Is the 30th. This Saturday. The 8th, maybe? Is that Columbus Day weekend? No, the, the, that is Columbus no, Day weekend. The 7th would be the Columbus Day weekend. But the, the 30th would not. Okay. This Saturday? This Saturday, it's 9 a.m. Does that work? This Saturday? Yeah. Applicant, for me. Could, uh, I should be up early. Applicant, can you represent? It probably makes sense to have somebody from your oh, team there. The 30th. Um, it's a young couple. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I'll be in Temple. Okay. Yeah, but we don't want to schedule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the 14th one? 14th? It would have to be. 14th. Yeah. I can. Uh, oh, we can't do the, the following. What's the following? Columbus Day weekend. Columbus Day. Oh, Columbus Day, yeah. Oh, wait, Columbus Day weekend is not that weekend? No. I think that's the weekend of the 7th. Right, that's Yeah, we're looking yeah. at yeah. The, what, the 14th, which is 14th. two days before the <coughs> next hearing. I should be okay for the 14th. Okay. I won't be able to attend, but I have a lot of conflicts on Saturday. Okay. Let me get there. So why don't we schedule that call B as uh, 14th at 9 a.m.? And we'll meet... Is a good spot to for the neighbors. Where's a good spot to uh, to meet? Okay. <laughs> okay. But isn't there an entrance? Of, is there an entrance road? There's a, yeah, there's, there's a trail. Okay. Is there any place for parking? Yeah. Yeah. What did we say? The 14th. Yeah. What's the address? 22 Alexander. 22 Alexander. Okay. Okay. So if it snows, we'll bring sleds. We'll bring sleds. Okay. Yeah. 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 Do you have a quick? Um, I'm at 28 Alexander Road, and there's a, there's a path that goes all the way around. It goes around Vernal Pool. Okay. Okay. We'll meet there, and then you can point us in the in the direction. So the actual uh, property has an access point. That, uh, that comes next to 28 Alexander Road? Yeah, you can come right up along the whole fence of the, the property line here and walk the whole side. It's already a pre cut path. It's like a it's cart path. It's existed for many, many years. It's a okay. trail I love cart paths. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to move. What I uh, what we're going to do is we're going to stop at this point in the agenda because it's, it's time for our, our next public hearing. What I want to do is we're going to do the uh, site walk at the open of the next hearing. We'll set a time. We will do comments from other town departments. I ask the, everyone to look at the outline, which if it's no more left in there, it is. You'll find it on the uh, link to this uh, meeting is the outline. Uh, if there's any thing you want to add to the outline, uh, we can bring it up at the next meeting. And then as we go through the detailed discussion, that's a good point and related to the topics discussed uh, to let your comments be known. 
And the only thing I ask is <coughs> if we're having a, um, I think most of the comments are probably going to be related to layout, screening, landscaping, et cetera. Um, bring it up in the appropriate time as opposed to uh, talking about landscaping when we're discussing driveway width, just so we bring everybody's comments together at the, the same time. So there'll be plenty of time to discuss uh, your comments and then join us on the 14th, right date, at 9 a.m. Uh, any of the neighbors uh, and you can join us for the, the site visit. Hot coffee is great, but oh, not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> so can we get a motion to continue the hearing? We can do 8.30. Uh, yeah, if you want to put an hour for Golden Bond, that would be Okay, there's let's say 8.35. 8.35. 35 to 9.35. So move. Motion to continue. We have a second. 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 All in favor? Well, uh, can I just a ask a question? Yeah. Um, are we not going to ask people if they have any comments tonight in general? Well, we have a 9-15 hearing, and we've got a tight schedule. We have to be out of here by 10. Right. So, so I'm just saying that a lot of people came tonight, yep. and I'm a little just uncomfortable sending them home without an opportunity for comments, and I understand the schedule so and the difficulty. I The problem I have is we have a public hearing at 9-15, and we have a set stop time at 10. So if it's acceptable to all of is there anybody who who doesn't think they'll be available at the either for the site walk or we can't take the public comment hearing. at the site walk. Yeah. Actually, well it is an open it's not a it's not a it's not a it's a public hearing. It's not a public anybody hearing. not gonna be available at the next hearing? What is it? The 16th at uh, 835. What month? October. Thank you. 8.35? 8.35. PM. <laughs> okay. As long as they're okay, I'm yeah. okay. I okay. Just so is everybody sure okay with that? The opportunity to speak if they, if they would like to speak, because they've come all this way yeah. yep. for this hearing. What, I, what I'm trying to do is I want to make sure you've got enough time to do it, rather than kind of cram it into the tight schedule we have. Thank you. So we can. Do we take, if, if I may, I think we need to bring up points. If, if some people are here to learn about it, some people might hear something specific to say. Yeah. That's concerning what we talked about tonight. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for us right any now? Any questions tonight? Yeah, I have one. How sure. are these uh, solar panels going to be? You do what? have to come to the microphone, ma'am. If I can address, we're on the site layout, that's one of the specific, we're gonna go into a lot of detail on what's going on to the site. So as we go through the outline, whatever detail Sorry, questions I have an administrative have. question. Have we gone to adding to the outline yet? No, because that's no. what I touched on is at the next meeting we'll be going through. But you said we're on the site layout? No. No, no. We're, we're now trying to end the public hearing so we can go on to the next public hearing. Okay, misunderstood. Okay. We're good. Do we have a motion, a second? We did. We did. Okay. We'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm one abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Do we need to a uh, motion quick on that next public hearing? No. The next public hearing is 9.15. Yeah, so that's. Just open it. Make a motion open to open the public yeah. hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Muriel Crown then. Just a comment, Muriel. That like other meetings, they're gonna be coming back a lot, right? I mean I understand you're concerned that they came this way tonight, but so we'll have to keep coming back. We're talking about that for a few minutes. I'm I'm happy to do that. I think that um Saturday should open that. I think that I would be more comfortable with possibly making sure that at the opening of a big hearing like this that we ha we leave plenty of time for yeah. the public because yeah. a lot of people come and it is a hardship to come time and time right. and time again. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and some of the comments are very informative to us as we begin the hearing. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Agreed. Very Most much agree. Aren't used to coming here and they may feel frustrated, but. <coughs> Yeah, I'm not really complaining. I'm yeah. just, yeah, I'm no. just making it. Yeah, and I think what we're gonna, no what I want to do is make sure we've got enough time that people don't feel rushed. That's absolutely. In, in doing it. So if we have to break the outline up into segments and come back again, I'm fine with that. I think you were right, Mary Ellen. I appreciate you throwing out. Can we have a motion uh, to open the public hearing 9070 Main Street Minor Site Plan Review Western Nurseries? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Turn it over to the applicant. Uh, Good evening. <laughs> I'm Wayne Mezzett. This is Brian Quinn. He's our financial guy. Let me just read the uh, proposed use. I think you all have the, the outline, but I think this um, summarizes what we're looking to do. Western Nurseries is proposing to construct a 3,200 square foot greenhouse for the purpose of growing annuals, perennials, and house plants that we will sell to our customers. This greenhouse will allow our operation to function more efficiently and provide a better environment for our plants. Currently, our annual plants are kept outside, and we have to pay a lot more attention to them because they are subject to the weather. They can dry out easily, get too wet, become frost damaged, and are more subject to insects and diseases. Placing them in an enclosed greenhouse will greatly reduce the risk presented by weather and nature. We also see the structure helping our business because our customers will be more likely to shop during rainy days and colder times of the year. We will be able to offer more plants than our customers are asking for throughout the year and more indoor plants during the winter months. Okay. Want to, any questions on that statement? Or? No, I think what we got in front of us is the question that is it minor or major? Well, I think what we need to do is the minor now kind of explain what's been submitted. We do have the materials, but for the public, kind of explain what it'll look like, et cetera, and what the plan is. Okay. This is a, a greenhouse that we're moving from one of our competitors in. Uh, South Natick that um, is, what's the size of the structure, Brian? It's 40 by 80. Um, steel frame with a glass and poly, uh, polycarbonate shell. It's um, going to be right next to our garden center store itself. And um, Going to be used for growing the plants that we described annuals and, and perennials. If I may? Yeah. Does that, that's where you presently keep um, some overstock trees that you have going into where your gravel and stuff is on the right of that? Is that what we're talking about? No, actually, it's, it's part of our sales area. Part of your sales area? Yeah. Um, next to the, what is it, ag Agway or something that you have there? Uh, or you? We have a, a garden center store, yep. and this is going right next to it, right where the... Uh, to the right of it, right? To the, if you're looking at it, it, it to the right-hand side. To the right-hand side of it, yep. Okay. Just for clarity. Mm. So right now there's shrubs there, I think, right? There are the trees and shrubs for okay. sale, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Okay. Questions? Frank, it looked like you've got a question. Uh, no, I, I, I'm thinking that um, it, this is pretty straightforward, and I like to make a motion that this is a minor site uh, plan uh, change. And um, I like second that. Right, yeah. I like to also make a compounded motion that uh, we determine that the site plan this complies with site plan standards, as it's noted in our notes. And I vote that we approve the site plan with the conditions that are listed. And if you like, I can read them. I second the motion. There are six conditions currently. Can we allow 
Number one, the applicant shall be responsible for mitigating all construction related impacts, including erosion, siltation, and a control and dust control in a timely manner. Uh, the applicant number two, the applicant shall regularly remove construction trash and debris from the site in accordance with a good construction practice. No Sorry, trace stumps. procedural <laughs> question. Sorry to interrupt, Frank. But are we no trace what are stumps we voting? Well, I uh, thought the motion was to make this a minor. He's combining the two motions, then we'll open up to discussion on the board and then we'll open it up to the public. Okay. No tree stumps, demolition material, trash or debris shall be burned or buried on the site. Number three, mechanical equipment or other utility hardware on the roof, grounds or buildings shall be screened from view from the ground. Number four, the director of municipal inspections inspects site plans on, under construction for compliance with the approved decision of site plan review. If the director of municipal inspections determines at any time before or during construction that a registered professional engineer or other such outside professional is required to assist with the inspections of the stormwater management <coughs> system or any other component of the site plan, the applicant shall be responsible for the cost of these inspections. Uh, number five, in accordance with uh, Mass General Laws 210-138, I'm sorry, Hopkinton by Zoning Bylaw 210-138, the applicant shall provide a performance guarantee in the amount of $3,000 to the town prior to the commencement of construction pursuant to this decision. The guarantee shall consist of a deposit of money or negotiable securities in a form selected by the planning board to guarantee that any unforeseen problems which arise such as erosion and sedimentation and the correction of site lighting problems are addressed. The funds will be held by the town and returned to the applicant upon completion of this project. Uh, and number six, construction may occur only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday through Friday, and Saturdays between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m., pursuant to Chapter 141, Article 1 of the Town of Hopkinton General Bylaws. It's quite a motion. Yeah. <laughs> That's Discussion. A lot. Discussion? from the board and then we'll open up to the public. I just have a uh, really quick process question, I think. You were just here with a, a minor site change and it, was it our process that prevented you from doing both at the same time? Yeah, this is a separate application. Yes. Okay. Yes. I just, well, I just mm -hmm. wondered because, it, you know, not that we don't like to have you here, mm -hmm. but I just wondered if there was a more efficient way to do it if, or there just wasn't. Oh, this it wasn't is fine. Okay. And it was commercial versus retail. Right. Right. This one had to go to the abutters, which is why it took a little longer. Okay, I just, uh, you know, I just was wondering. But we're always happy to see you. Any other comments from the board? Any comments from the public? So we have a motion on the table. Just a totally Sorry. unrelated comment. Is it Peter Mezzet? Peter's my son. Oh, your son. Is that what the PJMs are named after? Actually, it was my grandfather. Oh, your grandfather. PJM, yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to meet the person that, Pe you know, Peter's all my wishes at my house are. <laughs> Peter's the fourth generation. I'm the third. Thank you. So, so the motion is that we um, may consider it as a minor or major the criteria of the, the minor project. <laughs> and approving it. And, and approve, approve it, it with the conditions. With the conditions. With the conditions. And I make the motion. It's already, there's a motion on the table done. already. On the table. My question is procedural. Shouldn't one uh, vote for B and C be predicated on A and not combined into one? I mean, I, I, this is so straightforward. Yes. I, 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 I do believe we probably should have a separate vote for okay. each just for Correct. clarity. I, I do too, Frank. I'm not disagreeing but with you. I but agree with you. I, I think just for okay. procedural purposes, I would like them separated out individually. Is, is that a friendly amendment? With the, the KISS yeah. statement. A, fr a friendly amendment. Just Keep sure. it simple. I would accept that friendly amendment. Okay. So motion on the table is it's a minor plan and meets the requirement of a minor plan. I make the motion that it's, it's minor. No, it's it's, it's, it's already a motion. Yeah. It's so we're voting on part A. Part of yeah. part, part A. a. Okay. Right. So I second the motion that it's minor. No, it's, it's, it's already done. It's already been authored. It's already done. Okay, <laughs> let's see. We're discussing, we're just, right? Yeah. We are. Okay, I, I do have a question about <laughs> assembly of the of the, the, the unit. Obviously, you said you're <coughs> taking it from one facility and you're bringing it to yes. you. I'm assuming it's coming over in pieces. Yes. Yeah. Um, how? complicated is it to assemble? Is it done in a day? Is it done over time? It's going to take, what, what do they say, three weeks? One week to disassemble. Right. 
three weeks to reassemble. Yeah, so it's about a month long process. It's a month long process. So um, where does that fall in our understanding of whether it's a major or minor? Does that, does that have any bearing at all uh, uh, on the time? I think it's a there. judgment. Thing, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's a judgment thing. And if we vote it as not being minor, we're going to have to come up with an outline and take the time to go through all the steps and yeah, discuss no, every point. That. I just, I'm, I'm, thinking, yeah. I'm thinking of the impact on the, uh, the surrounding people. And I'm just trying to understand if it's a month-long project. Well, if I can, um, add, if I can add to that, yeah. is I think that that when they're saying that it'll take a week to disassemble, it's on the other property. Right. No, I, I get that. Right. Okay, yeah, so I, so that yeah. has no effect on. Stay, well, if, if I can follow up yeah. uh, on, on Kelly's comment, staging area for the materials, et cetera, would be where. It's on site. It, it, it should not be a hindrance. Okay. And, and I think you have quite a big of a buffer <laughs> to the neighbor's property, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so it shouldn't affect any of the okay, butters. Just, yeah, it's a good question. Good question. Yeah. Good question. Right. Good question. And typically, and it's a good point, typically we have not taken into account the period of time Correct. to reach the final uh, construction and, point yes. in determining minor or major. And maybe that's a good point to, yeah, it's, it, to bring it in. It seems fairly logical that yep. that should be a somewhat of a consideration. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? So we have a motion on the table. We're ready for a vote and whether it's, uh, that it's minor, right? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carry. We'll make a second motion. Well then the second it's one's all, all made. Still, yeah, in play. still in play. So we have so any discussion on the second motion? It appears that all site plan standards um, are in compliance. Has anybody seconded? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think this is a discussion. When did all this yeah, happen? Yeah, this. Because when <laughs> no he made that, it, just... No good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> yes. He was time, trying to simplify it for us, and right. it just yes, complicated it. Right. Yes. <laughs> I think we got a handle on it. <laughs> so I don't see anything in the same plan standards that are not in compliance. No. Okay. Any other discussion? What did you say was not in compliance? There's not, nothing. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. I'm more simplifying things, right? <laughs> yeah. We still have to approve the conditions. Just, it's approved. No, no, Thank you. No, 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 Thank you for all your service that you brought. I was thinking of the conditions and that and approve the conditions. I might want to have to. We have a motion there. Any issues with the conditions? No. Okay. So we included the conditions in, so we can now have a vote on the conditions. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. So carry. Thank you. Thank you. And just as simple as that. Jennifer did a really good job on this, so that's, that's what made it easier for me to yeah. make so, that motion. So just a point of clarity here. We just had three votes, but we normally have two votes, right? We normally vote that yeah. it's minor or major, and then we normally vote to with, prove with, it with right. the conditions. Right, right. Okay. That's because we simplified it. But, yeah. But Jennifer wrote it out for us with, that we had yes. as three actions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she did? Okay. But somehow yeah. we, we've in the past have actually combined. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Take care. Thanks, guys. And Kobe. You too. Is Roy showing up? Or? I don't see him. I don't uh, think he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I don't think he was expected to be there. He sent a letter. I, I think that they that it was it was implied that he was asking for relief. Is what I got from it. It's very definitely implied. That he's asking. Yeah, but I didn't know if he was going to be. He's usually here. Through, through the we chair. Letter requesting relief. We did. Yes. I can, can I bring up a quick agenda item that related to one of our meetings, but it's just an administrative kind of question? Well, why don't we do that when we bring up the, okay. we look at, sure. we're going to approve the minutes from sure. the meeting. So there was a letter dated September 11th. Uh, it's in your package. Legacy Farm is planning on doing the finished paving on Legacy Farm South before September 30th. We are working with John Westerling on our portion of the sidewalk on East Main Street near the senior living housing. We plan to start work on that in the next few weeks. We have been waiting on the town to get their plans approved by the Conservation Commission for the bridge crossing and entrance for the athletic field parcel. Now that this has been approved by the Conservation Commission, we can complete our plans for the sidewalk and submit them to the Conservation Commission for approval. 
We hope to get this approved before the end of the year. We, respect, yeah, we respectfully request an extension of time to complete the sidewalk to June 15, 2018. And the reason for him sending the letter is going back to the subdivision approval for Legacy Farm South said roadway and infrastructure construction shown on the subdivision plan shall be completed within five years from the start of construction or approval shall be automatically rescinded unless such time is extended by the board at the request of the applicant. I'd like this to make a motion that, that we request. approve the extension. I, I, I Let me finish yeah. history. <laughs> covering on it. Uh, if construction has not commenced within five years from the date of this approval, such approval shall be automatically rescinded. Construction began in October 2011. Last year, the board granted an extension through September 30th, 2017. So this is an extension on that. Since the work will not be completed till the end of the year, per Mr. McDowell's letter, the board will need to issue an extension of the time to complete the work. He has requested until June 15th, 2018. I'd like to make a motion that we extend him to March 31st, 2018. I second the motion. To March. Oh, yeah. And the, th the thinking behind that is... Uh, well, last wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, well, let's have a discussion. The, the, the yeah, thinking behind that is that last year, we, when we had this discussion, we didn't want to have construction during uh, the marathon, and this would be an effort to get construction done before the marathon. Well, I, 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 so, so you're, as, you're asking for what, Frank? For when? March. Let me just check my calendar. Uh, March, March 30th or 31st, whatever it is. Uh, I, I think they're I going think, to... Yeah, I think we should go with, our, with his original, and the reason why is because I don't think that he's going to do any construction during marathon time for that particular... Well, what, what we, want to be, we want to be done already. I, well, well, that's agreed, but he had to wait for other things. So, so. But I, also, I, there's, been, there's been factors that we want to have it done sooner rather than later, so it's just three months sooner than what he's asking for. Uh, I think asking for till March 31st gives him enough time to, in warm warm enough weather, to complete what he needs to complete, and um, that's that's the goal. Well, I, I don't I agree with that aspect okay, of well, it. Okay, let's go yeah, in I order. Just, I just want to make David. a comment. So I I agree with Frank. I think it would be a good idea to get it done before the marathon. And I also wanted to make a comment that I just drove by the other day, and they've already dug up all the sidewalks, so they're already starting construction. So I don't think they'd have an issue with it. I guess I would lean more towards the June 15th recommendation that they asked for. If we could attach a condition that they can't disrupt the marathon, uh, that'd be okay with me. But I think if we extend it to March, we may have to re-extend it to right. June. Right, right. And if he's asking, in, in, in my opinion, it's to me now, in my opinion, if he's asking for that, I'm sure he will get it done. Um, he's been working with us um, through all due diligence throughout the town and everything else, and he's done everything that he's asked for. I don't believe that that if he can, if he can't see his way to getting it done prior to that, it will be done um, at that date. So I say that we allow him what he's asking for for the June fifteenth. I think that. March 30th um, would be really tight just considering that asphalt batching plants aren't even opened until late February. Uh, so we'd really be giving him only about 30 days after the weather turns. So I, I would go with the uh, the June 15th. Yeah, I'm going June 15th. I mean, I, oftentimes I know this from baseball, there's still snow on the ground uh, by the end of March. I don't think it makes, you know, to your point, if he's not getting it done this year, um, it's not going to happen before March 31st. June 15th would be my recommendation. Ariel? Uh, I just, uh, I'm a little mystified why it's two years at a post uh, original date, but I don't, I'm not really, I'm kind of agnostic on the March to June thing. <laughs> yeah, I actually second what Ariel just said. Uh, you know, March, June, it doesn't really matter at this point. It's past due. So. Yep. You want to make a friendly amendment to the. You want I think to change we go back to the original. I, I like this board to have uh, to apply a little bit of pressure. Uh, it's it's going to be two years uh, or a year and a half beyond this deadline. Um, sure, there's lots of things going on, but we, we're responsible for making sure that these things happen when they're supposed to happen. So I I just think that. Mm -hmm holding them to March 31st, 
uh, gives us um, the town enough time to get things done so we have uh, uninter uninterrupted marathon and it gives him enough time to, <coughs> to get it done it's, it's three months if he needs a further three months he can come back in the future um, but I'd rather take the uh, a little bit stricter approach on, on this on this go around because he's asked us last year and we gave him a, a whole year so it's uh, that's that's my thing for, through for, through through for, for clarity on, on Frank's proclamation here can you read again why that was con or something. That there were issues with the crossing. There right. were issues with the. But there's wetlands. Right. And, and, and he, there was. He uh, had only he could only use two crossings during his construction, I believe, of Legacy, and he used them. Yeah. So. He but was, there was a, I think also the question of waiting for the town to come back. Yes. Correct. Right. So he did have to get, I think, permission. No. for further crossings across yeah. the wetlands. Can okay. I make, before we get a kind of a compromise solution, I'll tell you what the logic is. I'd like to see it done by the traditional summer season. So Memorial Day weekend starts the 25th of May. Yeah, that I think, you know, gives two months of typically, we know the weather's good, April and May, a lot of rain, but hopefully the snow not around. And it allows, um, by the time the summer starts, it's completed, it's done. I agree. Et cetera. You have to ask the guy, the motion guy. I, I, I'd be open to that. I don't, I mean, obviously, we've been on this for a while, and, yep. and the new members, and uh, if that's what the board's comfortable with more than being pulled up to March, that's fine with me. I just wanted to get done. So. <laughs> yeah, so, so the motion is now for to amend your motion to May twenty fifth. I accept a friendly motion uh, amendment to uh, May twenty fifth. May twenty fifth. Yes, second. Second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So mm -hmm. carried. Thank you. Um. Approve the minutes of August 28th. And we'll approve those and then have the other. Any changes to the minutes? I have none. None. <coughs> John Kirby. Do we have a motion? Approve, motion to approve the minutes as stated for our August 28th, 2017. We have a second. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 You have a question? Yeah, so the solar farm thing, I know we shouldn't bring up a discussion with everybody here, but just administratively. Wait, 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 so <laughs> we're on the minutes. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought. I thought now we we're on the, the, no. the approval of minutes. Yeah. I thought we voted. You said aye. We didn't say there were no aye. 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 I thought we voted. Oppose, abstain. I thought, abstain. We, voted. I thought we did vote. I, I voted. No, abstain. I mean, I don't know the rest of you people, but I voted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing it's almost time to go home. <laughs> Before, just to keep on to keep on track, just to be clarified, I'm, I'm abstaining because uh, I do have some issues with the minutes, but it's not the right time or place to get into them here. So, uh, well, right. not, not, <laughs> nothing you did wrong. Just we'll talk later. Okay. Thank you, Frank, for keeping us from suffering. I love it. <laughs> it's okay. So, if it's a procedural question unrelated, because. If it's specifically related to their project, right. it's a closed public hearing. So why don't I ask it and then you can figure out whether it's worthy of discussion or, or can be discussed or not. So I'm Well, I don't know if you can. Yes. Can you without We can ask questions yes. amongst ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just make sure. So on page 16 of the, the our, um, article 31, there's a section that says approval criteria. And there's three things listed. One is the, that it confirms to the article. The second is that it's not detrimental to the neighborhood or the town. But John, you made a comment that we're kind of legally bound to approve it. If no, if it meets the criteria. But that's number one. That's, per, if it's, in other words, he is, no. There are three approval criteria. Right. One, two, and three. If yes. it meets the three criteria. Right. So one mean that it meets all our zoning. Number two sounds like 
we have some judgment as right, far but that's it's part of the approval criteria. Okay. Okay. Because it. Okay. I think you're saying the same so thing. So D I am. is approval criteria. There are three points okay. under D. So just to be clear, though, if we think this is not, if this is will be detrimental to, to the town, we can vote. I can vote no. It's just part of the correct. Okay. I just want to make but sure. But what I wanted to make it since Jennifer's not here, what I wanted people to know is we just don't have the ability to say you can't build this. Right. Because people. Mm -hmm like to do that you know like think at times that we have the ability to stop commercial development well, I, I see I, I was having a hard time making the connection I got yeah. it now so what I wanted to do is let them know we have to meet right. the project has to meet all the criteria but if the project meets all the aspects of the bylaws and criteria etc we don't have the ability to just say no. And, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but to summarize, that's true with any project that we have, that we can't just say no because we want right. to say no, we right. have to have a valid but, uh, reason. I, right. yeah. But, well, a, but a part of the law. education yeah. process is people don't necessarily understand that, especially a large project, <clears> that we don't have the ability to stop it. Uh, because there are plenty of times on the board where we've all sat there and go, do we really want this? Right. Uh, and we have decided it, it's met the criteria and you know, we approved it. And sometimes we could look at the same thing and, and look at it from different Interpret perspectives. Interpret it differently, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's equally yeah. valid. The I, have both the be. I, have a, I have a really technical question on it that might be worth asking for advice on. Yeah. Um, the the pre-existing non-conforming frontage and the additional use, I don't understand yeah, it's a good the question. The implication of that. Kobe, do you want to write that down, as Jennifer, when she gets back? To provide well, the answer. Question for that. Question the change in use, like with, if you're talking like in a regular residential context, uh, you want to, you want to change the use, um, or you want to put an addition on, it would require a special permit. So I think that kind of still fits into the same framework that we're looking at here. Um, we're still looking at it. <coughs> A special permit, um, special approval for the change of use in that. Yeah, I'm still, you know. I, I, and I accept that you could be exactly right, mm -hmm. just to be clear, but um, there's, um, there's, there's a piece that niggles at me, and I'd like to hear it um, from our town, you know, professionals, absolutely. that it's a non-conforming um, access point, it's non-conforming frontage, mm -hmm. um, and it's a dramatically changed or added on to use. I just want right. to understand it. And, and to that point, um, I, I question the same thing as far okay, as... Okay, I don't want to get into, because yeah. now we're getting into a discussion. Discussion. All right, that, that, that's fine. Thing. <coughs> so... All right, she has one. Okay. The center school reuse survey. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, that's what yeah. I was going to bring. Yeah. Move to. Um, Frank, you want to touch on that? Um, yeah, I wasn't able to attend this meeting, and um, then uh, we're trying to figure out how to actually we do that. We did not pick a backup so I was informed that anybody who attended on our behalf would just sit in the audience and so but I didn't extend to the entire board to do that because I think we have we can get the information that was provided but, but, but we made one a of survey yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. oh, but it looks like we're not going to have time to discuss it no tonight. let's we've got five minutes okay go but yeah, also we're looking for a backup <laughs> well let's see is your department or board familiar with Center School Building and Grounds? When is when is it due back? I mean, can we set aside time? This is one of the questions on my list. Was a time in our meetings that we can work yep. through some of these issues? Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to yeah. give them that. If uh, this is tailor made for us to at least take a swing mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. and I so, think it's due back before our next meeting. Well, no, actually, it was due back October second, but we had the same question for a Stork District, and Elaine told me they're not meeting again until later in October. Okay. So that we actually okay. have more time. So why don't we day. add um, discussion? A discussion. We went seven thirty to eight thirty, eight thirty, eight thirty five, nine thirty five, nine thirty five to ten o'clock. And then maybe it could, could, could um, we send a, just send a, an email to the center school committee so that they know that no, we're going to like <laughs> no, no wonder. On the 16th. Yeah, but one of the things to just touch on, Kobe, why don't you discuss um, floor load? Are you familiar with that? I was talking to Jennifer about 
No. No. Okay. <laughs> what has come out with the rebuilding of Town Hall is uh, land use is not going to be able to have their oh, files, the files. Yeah. Oh, yeah. on the upper floor, upper floor oh. of Town Hall mm -hmm. because they've since found out that, I guess, structurally, it's <laughs> too heavy. <laughs> We're lucky that it ended up in the basement. So, they've said that all along. Though. Yeah. So what <laughs> has come up is one potential reuse would be is have land use over over there. Town hall and the schools. Yeah. Yeah. And, and get rid of that rental property. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to suggest this if we all look at the questions and, and think about them and then I'll ask Jennifer or Elaine to forward Ken's mail that as a board we put together and Ken sent out here two years ago that they'll be um, showing you the thinking that we'd, we'd already uh, approached and it's some of the same thinking that we have uh, today or, or two meetings ago for that committee um, and, and we really do need a backup for me in case there is uh, another holiday or something that they seem to ignore. And they're not televised, right? The, so nope. we couldn't watch it later, okay? Is anyone interested? I'd love to, but I can't. I was just going to say. <laughs> I wish I could. I'm, I'm straight. You're a double elected. It doesn't stop anybody from attending the meeting, just you have to attend the meeting. Just in case I can't. So what does it doesn't matter that you can vote or you can. It's right. just an information. And I can't vote so anyways. Oh, so sorry. that's. So somebody could back you up. Well, be in attendance. well you, can, you can make a phone call to me, Frank, if you can't make that meeting. But it has to be official. Uh, Why? Uh, no, if, if they're not, if they're sitting in the audience, it doesn't have to be official. But if they want to be at the table, right. that's the problem? Yeah, that's I the see. basic. Okay. What day of the week do they meet? The I'm uh, sorry. They so won't let somebody just sit up there and listen to this conversation? I was told. Okay. No. I'm just, I'm wow. just telling you. <laughs> I asked. So what uh, what day of the month do they? Yeah. Well, usually Wednesdays, but that could change. Yeah, Once a month meeting? I, I wasn't, yeah. Hmm. Well, I, then, have, I have meetings on that's every Wednesday. <laughs> I, I'm generally free on Wednesday if you put me as the backup. Okay. But it, um, thank you very much, Amy. But I was not that. Yeah. 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 awesome. Just as quick as she is. Yeah. We need a vote. I make that motion. <coughs> second, second. What was All the motion? That a Amy will be Frank's oh, okay. backup on the center okay. school reuse committee, whatever it's called. Boy, girl, but this, I couldn't go that last time, so. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Quick procedural thing, Mario's point. So on our agenda, can we just put 945 every time, general admin or something like that, so we at least have 15 minutes? To, so Because now, according to the agenda, it kind of looks like it, the last person can go right to 10 o'clock. So That's I would a good like idea. to make okay. that suggestion. That's a good idea. Yeah. And, yeah. and I wondered if, uh, I, I don't know how people feel about this, but I, you know, I have a growing list of things that I'm, I'd love for us to talk about. Um, at, just as an example, what we talked about tonight, the emergency services and the yeah. impact. How do we, how do we impact Kobe, that process and understand why, that process? Why don't we hold the following meeting open as much as we can and that let Jennifer know. And then let's think about at the next meeting how much of that time we want to <coughs> basically use for the topics we want to discuss. Correct. Because rather than have in case somebody comes, yeah. you know, typically Jennifer will say we can get that on your, was it the 20, what's the, the 30th, October 30th is, when's the meeting after the 16th? Must be the 30th. Um, two weeks later. The 30th. Yeah. Well, see, usually it would be the, the 30th. 23rd. We only moved the 16th because of Columbus Day. Yep. So, oh. so, so normally our meeting would be the 9th and the 23rd. Yes, because of the holiday. The 16th and the and what's the other shift from the 16th? What's the one after the 16th? 30th. 30th. It is going to be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that, that probably Tuesday is just a built-in. Yeah. Um, so it's the 16th. It's yeah. on the bottom of the memo. The 16th yeah. and the 30th. So we'll and then hold November that open and, and we'll discuss that at the next meeting if there's something, okay. you know, we'll, we'll so set the agenda for that. So we ask Jennifer. So what are we? What are we going to? What are we saying? Like 15 minutes? 10 minutes? Or no, no, we're not no, sure yet because we've got some, you know, services <coughs> issues, et cetera. Well, for the next one, it's an anomaly, right? Okay. So, right, I mean, right, yeah. But after during that meeting, we're going to decide right. going forward how much time to allot, right? And John, if I understand. But I think we want to, as Muriel said, we discuss services as an example. Yep. Yes. For the yeah. thing. We take some time. Let's set aside a meeting 
or at least a good chunk of the meeting on the, the 30th to discuss some of these and, uh, and define and our say, intention I'm right? just gonna say if you if you have a like I have a growing list and it's just my list I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna send it with a little explanation to Jennifer so she can sort of and and she can make that part of the notice so people know what we're gonna try and talk about sure and but everybody else if you have things to add that would be helpful I think yep. I, I know that you know. Obviously, we were squeezed for time. We needed to have this jam-packed agenda. But I, I do want to say that I think Muriel made a very good point yep. earlier. We had a huge turnout, and we were not able to allow the public to speak. So I'd like for us to, if there's any way possible, to make our agendas a little bit more um, chewable. I guess. Yeah, I think you know, uh, so that we can chew through it yeah. and still be able to have some open discussion and make sure the people who do show up can be heard. What I was trying to do is the real discussion points we hadn't gotten to oh, yet. Oh, I agree. I, yeah. Is that when we go through the outline at the yeah. next meeting is we allow plenty of discussion and not try to rush through all the points. I agree. I think, I think though, there's a lot of people that might not understand the process, yeah. and so they might have left here frustrated thinking that tonight they were going to be able to voice their opinion. And so I just want to make sure that you know, we don't we don't pack our agenda so tightly right. that we right. can't allow for the public to speak yep. if they show up. So, so as long point, if I may, Kelly, as long as I've been on the board, yeah. that has been my sole intent is to get the public involved in in back you know dialogue of, of the whole thing. So whenever I don't think I've ever come across where we never didn't do this. It, 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 it's when I've been well, saying. It was a 500-page agenda. It was huge. <laughs> so, yeah. so it was like, and, and it was like night. Yeah. So I have and a From suggest. experience where I think if, you know, we have to spread things out over multiple meetings, it, it's hard also to go beyond that 60 minutes when you get into an hour and a half, two hours on one topic. Right. You tend to lose people, et cetera. So what I, my goal would be is to break the outline up into smaller segments so people can really talk about it. Exactly. I, I almost feel differently that it, it makes more sense for the applicant. And I'm, again, very willing to be, you know, shot down. But uh, for the applicants to, to tee up the conversation, you know, re-engage with the conversation, tee up yeah. the conversation, for us to chew it, you know, really digest some of the material and get marched through the agenda and then also have time for public comment. I just feel that um, that a couple of the, the for example, Golden Pond, when, he's, when uh, he kicked it off, he was like, oh, we're done. Um, I remember that distinctly. And really, especially, maybe especially the first hearing when it's a big project, to make sure we have enough time to, to really get the whole presentation and public, because well, everybody then, shows up What to do time. is then let's discuss Pick at the, that meeting on yeah. the 30th, changing the, agenda, changing the outlines. That, that's what I was just going to suggest because I have it in front of me. I think if to enforce what we're all saying, we're all saying the same thing, right? In number 11, we have public comment. So why don't we add like a around right after the planner comments, but before beta group, right before you get into that heavy detail, initial public comments. Well, I and think maybe one, after beta because beta, yeah, my point is. Uh, whatever yeah. we in, but yeah. Yeah. My, point being that, yeah. my point being that we have an initial <laughs> public comment up top and then a detailed public comment yeah. down further down. All right, and now we're over time. But I have a quick question. Has uh, Zach started meetings, or do you no, have a schedule? They haven't, dis they haven't determined or decided when's the first meeting. Okay. I think it's going to be okay, the next two weeks. Don't go yet, though. <coughs> it, uh, Kobe wants to I have a question. Because we've already now, for the, the center school discussion, we uh, scheduled that for October 16 and 9.35. Do you want to move that over to the 30th? No. No. So no. that's an additional discussion David, on right. the 30th. You have to steal that one. Okay, before we do that, yeah, let's take a motion to close the. I make a motion to close the. <laughs> Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thank you, everybody. Thank you again. Oh, my goodness.